far as I can tell, engaged. I'm going to share a little bit before I introduce the first poet. Um, the last homemade, I think I had a lot more nervousness and jitters because I've never done anything like this before. It's really um, strange to be someone that is, thrives off of community and camaraderie and being around uh, one another and gathering to then have to see my beautiful faces through screens. And so this is just where we are. And so we're doing the best we can. One of the things that I didn't get to do last time was kind of give context. So there's a lot of people who do know who I am and who do know who some of these poets are and some who don't. So as an introduction, I just wanted to share with everyone who's watching the live right now. My name is Aja Monet. I'm a poet originally from Brooklyn, New York. I currently live in Little Haiti, Miami. Um, so I'm here in South Florida right now, currently at actually Bakehouse Art Center, which has been a place that has provided safe space for community artists. I started writing poems as a young teenager and I became fascinated with the power of language. Growing up, I gravitated toward the church, the fire of the sermon, the water of worship and the conjuring of community. And I witnessed the power in prayer and the ascendance in action. My educators became the foundation by, uh, to my sanctity. And I think about this often in this moment because reflecting on the millions of children who are struggling under what is now currently martial law uh, with the inability to make decisions for themselves, the lack of support for their parents to care for them, and um, the list goes on of some of the minor issues, you know, some of the many faceted issues that we're dealing with in light of this circumstance and this scenario. Um, I went home to a single mother of three kids who was constantly transitioning with housing and mental emotional stability, and I gravitated towards poems and found out about a youth poetry organization called Urban Word NYC. It was there that I first competed with other poets, found community and mentors, and my first year, I didn't make it very far, but my second year I was determined and dedicated and a whole world of metaphors opened up to me. I made it to final stage to represent New York City at the National Youth Poetry Slam called Brave New Voices, where is also where I met Shanaka Hodge and a whole other list of incredible poets. I met Abi Odun Oyewole of The Last Poets in the hallway turned green room of Washington Irving High School and it was there that I witnessed the magnitude of poetry and our collective ability to literally shift the universe. I feel that if we gathered in spirit and space, we could and we will always transform the conditions of our lives. Dune stopped by what was then teachers and writers office on Union Square and he had ran upstairs to use the restroom and I asked if he'd sign my notebook. It was, I was bright eyed and beaming with dreams and visions and he invited me to come to the open house sessions and I went religiously. Uh, it became a church of sorts, a church of poems. I was raised in the thick of those sessions and discussions, heated debates, earth-shaking laughter, and even tears. And I saw how a poem could empower, enrage, excite, heal, confront, and transform our realities. Every poetry reading began with a monumental and legendary pledge, which Pops will share with us today. And I've heard this pledge on some of my brightest and joyous days, and it has seen us through some of the most difficult times. What remains true for me throughout my life is that poetry is magic, it is medicine, and it is how we aid our communities. It is our first response. It's what we do with language. It's how we alter our frequency of time and space. It is the work that must be done that goes unnoticed and unnamed and has ripples effects for years to come. All of our lives have been turned upside down because of COVID-19 and yet it is the resilience of the human spirit that persists, rooted in oral tradition, homemade as a dedication for the people and is inspired by indigenous and African tradition. Our healing has always been holistic and therefore we must integrate our physical, our spiritual and our mental parts in the process of healing. Poetry is our healing inheritance and it is part of the practice of that integration of the holistic uh, aspect of healing. This reading series will take place every 1st and 15th of the month an homage to, to workers who are losing their paychecks. And to help us get through the thick of this pandemic, we are raising money. The donations will all go to support a brother who's been working to uh, feed, clothe, test, and take care of the homeless commu houseless community here in South Florida. Um, and so we're offering literal healing herbal remedies as well as medicinal poems, but we are, we are trying to solve the material conditions of our lives. Thank you for bearing with me through that introduction. 
I am so honored to go into this incredible list of uh, poets and poems and uh, offerings and medicine. Um, so that's the way that I would welcome you all into this space, this virtual space. And there is no one else I would rather have to open up that, that virtual poetic space than Baba Abio Dun Oyewoli of The Last Poets. Please join me in welcoming to the virtual stage, Pops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank you, everybody. Aja, I just like to say that you are one of the most special people I've ever known because you have kept your hands on the plow. You have never stopped working. And I recall when you first went to Sarah Lawrence, how you put together a major a fundraiser for those folks down in, 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 in New Orleans area behind the Katrina, the, the Katrina flood that caused a lot of grief. You were right on the case with using poets to try to heal the wounds. And I was a part of that. And I'll never forget. But you continue to do, always do good work. You are truly a beacon of light for all of us to see and appreciate. And now you're doing this. So the virus and the system, the government, martial law, whatever other law they can come up with, I don't think it's going to stop Aja Monet. I think you'll always find a way to break through. And I'm, I'm real, real proud of you. And thank you for having me. Uh, at, at my open house, and, and actually, in all of the last poet's performances all over the world, we start out with the pledge. And the pledge is something that is probably the only thing I ever really freestyle. <laughs> but this was a freestyle because I don't pledge allegiance to the flag, and I do not sing that war song, that which they call the national anthem. So the word, now for those of you who've heard the pledge, you're familiar with it, so I don't need to really tell you about it. But for those of you who have nev never heard the pledge, there are eight words, and it's a call and response, which is a typical African way of doing things. And you have a word that's a response to my call. And your words are the eight words that you will be responsible for are free, grow, misery, down, true, sad, a lift, here. Now, when you're listening to the pledge, the word as I, I just mentioned will come behind the call very naturally. It's not difficult, but I'll say the words again, just so you have a heads up. Free, grow, misery, down, true, sad, a lift, here. And it's a little rhythm involved, so I'm sure that we got that locked. I'm not worried about your rhythm. I, I'm pretty sure we can get it together. So this is a pledge. I want to be what I can be to be proud, healthy, and free. I want to say what I know to help my brothers and sisters grow. I want to feel good about me and blame no one for my misery, because I'll be strong, turn it around. I want to go up, I'm not going down. I want to do what I can do to make all my dreams come true. Remember my past, good and bad, how I made it art, even when it was sad, I want to share whatever my gift. When you're feeling low, I'll give you a lift. I want to live without fear. I know that I'm blessed for being here. I know that you're blessed for being here. I know that we're blessed for being here. I know that we are blessed. That's the pledge. Thank you. Now, I should go on? Yes, feel free. Okay. Well, since this um, pandemic, since this, this catastrophic situation has occurred, I sit in my house most of the time and I'm, I'm always writing. I, I just write because that's the way I heal myself. And I honestly believe that when you write, when you have any creative art form that you are exploring, that's when you're having a conversation with God. Whenever you delve into your creative energy, that's the closest way to get into God's space because this creation that has made us and that's the creation that we are trying to replenish or, or repeat in whatever form we can. I've also taken up painting in the last 10 months and um, I, I think I'm getting pretty decent at it. I can't brag yet, but I do feel like some of the pieces I have are pretty nice. And it's been giving me a lot of therapeutic uplift. 
It feels very good. But this is some of the stuff I've written recently dealing with a lot of the issues that we've been going through. And this first piece um, is called We Are Survivors. The legacy of my people has no equal. We've always been divine and a gift to mankind. Snatched from our native land, put on slave ships, treated like animals, beaten with a bullwhip, naked and chained together across the Atlantic we came to live and die a slave Many were scarred and maimed. Some of us died and took our own lives. But through it all, most of us survived. Being chained on a ship, sitting in your own bowels and fists, how strong we had to be to survive all of this. Then to be auctioned and sold like a piece of furniture, our spirits remained unbroken. They had no clue who we were. So we picked cotton and cut cane and lived in a shack ate the scraps from a pig, but no disease did we attract. Thousands of natives were killed by the disease called smallpox. Somehow blacks survived. We were the ones God had not forgotten. After 600 years of being here, we've seen diseases come and go. Some of us have died. Most of us have found ways to grow. After slavery, they tried to kill us any way they could. So they became a human disease covered in sheets, wearing a hood. Many of, us were in, many of us were hung, shot, or beat to death, but our lives are like the wind. We are the best of God's breath. It seems the slave merchants didn't know just how precious their cargo was. Despite everything they've done to kill us, we still shower the world with love. It seems every generation has to deal with a new disease. Instead of us dying, we're multiplying and enjoying the growth of our seeds. We work with Mother Nature, and our ancestors protect us too. We're here on Earth to make a difference in the things we say and do. The legacy of my people has no equal. We've always been divine and a gift to all mankind. So that's, um, we are survivors. Uh, because, our space and it's uh, keeping our distance. So the social aspect has been sabotaged completely, it seems, and it's have a problem with being still, chill out. And, and, and I heard, uh, I think it was by Publishing to all those poems is phenomenal, but through this, all poems had to give me an introspective look at my at me. So they're personal, but they're not personal because we all are personal. So what's personal is really universal. So getting into self and understanding the nature of who we are, unsolving the riddle of our own lives is important because when you when you solve the riddle of you, you solve the riddle of millions because we are all connected. This is called be still. Can we be still for a moment? Can we turn up the volume in our minds? Embrace our solitude. There is a volcano erupting in the world. Can we chill and not panic? Hot lava is everywhere. Can we learn how to walk in space? We've heard the screams. We've seen the bodies. We want to live. We want to love. We must be still. Allow our hearts to provide the music. Allow our imagination to provide the show. Only when we are still, quiet within ourselves, will we hear Mother Nature and the message that she brings. Her message is in her song. Her song is in the wind. The wind is in the breath we breathe. We are forever. And I know all of us are aware of the fact that Mother Nature is not going to let this thing play out with her, her playing a role as well. So while this so-called pandemic is happening, there are tornadoes and hurricanes. I mean, she's got to like join in. And, and it's all because 
the world is changing. There's a major change. There's a major shift. And this is an extremely pivotal time. My son, my oldest son, Pharaoh, he made, he made mention when the year became, when the year got started, he said, Pops, this is 2020, clear vision. And clear vision sounds to me like things are going to be realized. Things are going to be revealed. And of course, in the Bible, they call it revelations. And if you look at the Torah, you look at the Quran, they all talk about this. The Mayans, they had a whole thing about this particular period. So this is a change a change in everything on this planet. And it's, we got this orange clown in the White House, but he's just a part of that change. So he's, he's a character. He thinks he's in charge, but he's not in charge. He was put there for purpose, and we know that. But anyway, this is a piece where I'm dealing with the fact that Mother Nature still got it on lock. Mother Nature is in labor. She cries all through the night. Her belly is full with new life. She is struggling to push it out. No one can help her. She must do this alone. Many of us ask God to help her. Mother Nature smiles and reminds us she is God herself. Giving birth is what she does. She gave birth when only night existed. She gave birth to dawn, and so we began. She is in pain right now. Her screams echo in our dreams, making it hard to sleep at night. Mother is strong. I know she will survive. The newborn will be beautiful, but we must wait. Watch her struggle be tortured by man's disobedience to God. Mother Nature is love, but she has been abused. Her arrows of love have been scorn to purge her home and pair for the newborn. The last one. That So I think the land that I saw of life or death, or man or woman, they have given us midget concepts of the way life really is supposed to be. Unfortunately, we're trying to live with those midget definitions and they don't fit us. The nature of life, be not dismayed by those who have passed. Death is just another breath, passes way to life. Our ancestors who built the pyramids knew there is no such thing as someone being dead. We never die. Life is a continuing process. We move from one life form to another. In this world of little men with little knowledge, their ideas are elementary. Their actions are juvenile. When you don't acknowledge your spirit, your mind plays tricks on you. Those of us who jumped overboard during the Middle Passage knew they made a choice for the next life. We are here for a moment to cherish and celebrate the life we've been given. It may be honorable to exit, when misery and horror are all you have to look forward to. There are many who I love who have moved on. I am selfish. I wanted them to stay with me. Each of us have our own journey, our own mission. We want to fulfill it, then bask in the sun. Sometimes clouds come, they don't go away. I want to be strong enough. I want to be wise enough to allow the sun in me to shine as bright as it can for as long as I can. When the clouds come to block my shine, I'm going to be ready to move on. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Pops. Thank you. Um, Pops doesn't remember, but there was a line that he, he said when we had meeting, when uh, I used to always just keep my notebook and keep notes of everything he would say. And he used to say, um, if you want to see how ugly the world is, play something beautiful in it. And I think in this one moment, we're seeing the contribution of positivity and creativity and um, what that reveals about the world around us when we start to cultivate that, that beauty. So thank you, Pops, for, for spitting truth to power. You are a library and we must start off with our elders to know where we are going. So I'm so grateful you, you were able to be here with us today. Thank you for inviting me, Aja. And you just continue the work that you're doing. It's very special, honey, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Next up. Join me in welcoming all the way from the, well, not the UK, <laughs> but he's originally from the UK, a friend of mine, someone who every time I've gone to um, travel in London, he's always looked out for me, always made sure and answered my emails or answered my calls and gave pointers and suggestions. He's a true, um, incredibly great poet and friend. So thank you and join me in welcoming Dean Atta here. Hello. 
Thank you so much, Raja, for having me. Um, it's incredible to be part of this lineup. Um, I am in the UK. Scotland is part of the UK. Um, they want to leave. Uh, <laughs> they want to leave England behind, um, but we're still part of the UK. So yeah, I'm originally from London. I've moved up to Glasgow in Scotland to live with my partner here, um, who is a doctor. So at the moment, it's quite a tense time um, for him and his colleagues, as we all know. Um, and I wrote this poem, um, and I'll go straight to it, because um, yeah, here in the UK, um, and many countries are doing it, we're kind of clapping um, every Thursday evening we're doing it here um, for the health workers. And um, we have a national health service here, which means um, healthcare is free for everyone in the UK, um, which is incredible. And um, we're really valuing that more than ever now. Um, and this poem I wrote for my boyfriend, Tom, it's called Clapping for the NHS. Did you hear them clapping for you last night on your way to work? I woke to an empty bed again, blackout curtains for you to sleep through the day. You've had another night of uncertainty. I've had another night of you away from me. I do what I can to pass the time, FaceTime my mother, and we cook the same dinner, host an online open mic, read the books I've been wanting to read for months. You'll be back on day shifts next week. But the light of day will not provide us with the certainty we so crave. Everyone tells me you are brave. I know you are afraid. And that's okay, my love. That's okay. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I wrote that poem for him, but for all the health workers and essential workers that are doing so much for us and putting themselves in the way of danger for us. Um, um, I want to share a few poems with you now from um, my new collection, um, The Black Flamingo, which is going to be coming out in the States next month in May. I thought it wouldn't happen because of everything that's going on, but my, my publishers still put it out there. So um, I want to share that with you. Um, and it's really exciting for me. It's my first time being published in, um, in America. And so, um, yeah, I'm really delighted to be part of the family there and join the poets there. Um, so I wanna share a poem called I Come From. Um, now that I live in Scotland, I'm, I'm always asked, oh, where are you from? Are you from London? Um, but when I was in London growing up and being asked, where are you from? Like people were, were kind of, it had a different resonance to it, that question. And I knew they were asking like, why are you brown? Why are you here? Um, so this is my response to I come from. I come from. I come from shepherd's pie and Sunday roast, jerk chicken and stuffed vine leaves. I come from traveling through my taste buds but loving where I live. I come from a home that some would call broken. I come from DIY that never got done. I come from waiting by the phone for him to call. I come from waving the white flag to loneliness. I come from the rainbow flag and the Union Jack. I come from a British passport and an ever ready suitcase. I come from jet fuel and fresh coconut water. I come from crossing oceans to find myself. I come from deep issues and shallow solutions. I come from a limited vocabulary but an unrestricted imagination. I come from a decent education and a marvelous mother. I come from being given permission to dream but choosing to wake up instead. I come from wherever I lay my head. I come from unanswered questions and unread books, unnoticed effort and undelivered apologies and thanks. I come from who I trust and who I have left. I come from last year and last year and I don't notice how I've changed. I come from looking in the mirror and looking online to find myself. I come from stories, myths, legends and folk tales. I come from lullabies and pop songs, hip hop and poetry. I come from griots, grandmothers and her storytellers. I come from published words and strangers smiles. I come from my own pen, but I see people torn apart like paper each a story or a poem that never made it into a book. Thank you. Um, and finally, I'll share a piece. I've been hearing a lot of people that are, you know, on lockdown and um, having to go back in the closet. So whether they're um, gay, lesbian or, or trans, um, living with family that don't know that about them and having to like not 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 let anyone know and um i wanted to you know show some solidarity with those people and um 
share this poem called How to Come Out as Gay. Don't. Don't come out unless you want to. Don't come out for anyone else's sake. Don't come out because you think society expects you to. Come out for yourself. Come out to yourself. Shout, sing it, softly stutter. Correct those who say they knew before you did. That's not how sexuality works. It's yours to define. Being effeminate doesn't make you gay. Being sensitive doesn't make you gay. Being gay makes you gay. Be a bit gay. Be very gay. Be the glitter that shows up in unexpected places. Be typing on WhatsApp, but leave them waiting. Throw a party for yourself, but don't invite anyone else. Invite everyone to your party, but show up late or not at all. If you're unhappy in the closet, but afraid of what's outside, leave the door ajar and call out. If you're happy in the closet for the time being, play dress up until you find the right outfit. Don't worry, it's okay to say you're gay and later exchange it for something else that suits you, fits, feels better. Watch movies that make it seem a little less scary. Beautiful thing, moonlight. Be South East London council estate, a daytime dance floor, his head resting on your shoulder. Be South Beach, Miami, night of water and fire, your head resting on his shoulder. Be the fabric of his shirt, the muscles in his shoulder, your shoulder. Be the bricks, be the sand, be the river, be the ocean. Remember, your life is not a movie, except you'll be coming out for your whole life. Accept advice from people and sources you trust. If your mother warns you about STDs within minutes of you coming out, try to understand that she loves you and is afraid. If you come out at 15, this is not a badge of honor. It doesn't matter what age you come out. Be a beautiful thing. Be the moonlight too. Remember, you have the right to be proud. Remember, you have the right to be you. Thank you. Thank you, Azure, for having me. Um, it's you. been wonderful and I'm so looking forward to hearing everyone else. Thank you, everybody. Please support Dean with his new book coming. Uh, well, is it out already? No, 26th of May, it's coming okay. out. 26 yeah. okay. Thank you. All right. Our next poet is a fire spitter, fire, like just an amazing, amazing, incredible um, person. I first started hearing Ursula when I remember hearing records, like it was one of the first um, voices that I like remember po like falling in love with poetry over incredible music. And um, I've always been a fan. I've always wanted to like cross and, and cross paths and be in community with one another. And this is probably the first time we've ever actually had a chance to do that. And then when we were doing this next um, homemade show, I wanted to make sure that your voice was included because you are an inspiration. And a lot of the people on this, on this call in this meeting um, are inspirations for me. So thank you for agreeing to do this during this time. And thank you for everything you've done leading up to this moment. Please join me in welcoming Ursula Rucker to the virtual stage. Thank you. Thank you, Aja. Oh my goodness. I am ever grateful for you inviting me, inviting all of us. Uh, like I said, I think last week, you're a boss. How'd you do it? How'd you get all of us together? Like, this is a miracle. It's a miracle. Um, so that speaks to your spirit, you know, and your power and the, the work that you do. So thank you for everything you do. Um, Hello to everybody in this in this box. Um, bless up, no respect. Uh, hello to everybody that's tuning in. Um, yeah, my name is really Ursula Rucker, although the thing says LG Stylo Four. That's my that's my alter ego. It's, it's my alter ego. Um, yeah, and uh, Musa, congratulations, brother. That's what's up. Yeah, I do that restorative justice work and um so happy, so happy. Baba, you know, you already know we all love you. Thank you for the ground that you uh groundwork that you laid. And um as we stand in this moment, as we sit in this moment, as we ponder in this moment, this wild ass moment, um feeling all kinds of things, thinking all kinds of things. Uh wanted to do this piece called Loveless, dedicated to the planet, dedicated to my Philly sister, Kendall Noni, who asked me to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, I just uh, want to give this as an offering. As we await 
sister son's arrival. Child stars, you'll listen to my tale triste. As it was told to me by my sister afar, earth her name and this, this is her story. Sister moon, hear me now, fear my end too soon, too soon. My wounds are deep, gaping, unhealing, can't believe, refuse to believe my children have no feelings for me. See them sealing a fate of early death and destruction. Watch my foolish daughters and sons as they kill me, slowly kill me, quicker kill me. They've loved me as would an unfaithful lover, part-time and half-assed, now unmasked their deceit. No more sweet, sneaky, thrill-seekings tomorrow brings, nevers and nothings, ended days for my world and its unchanging ways. Now, apocalyptic truths of revelations hastens our omega, my children's and mine, each time. My breath, skin, and tears are polluted by their careless fears and whims and my power is fading. You surf by the hurt, Mother Earth's now a plaything for the ungrateful child so cold, 10 billion fold, my tears. I long for the once adoring embrace of my children, their prayers, their cares, their tenderness has now turned loveless. The embrace now in anaconda's grip, unmerciful and swift, swift with the killing. Killing is a sport, fun with fire, my wondrous rain forests reflect the neglect they have for their main source. They slaughter their sibling blossoms and beasts like the first murderer came. Their pure sister oceans will never be the same due to daily spoil and brother skies choke from oil, refinery, factory smoke. The Mother Earth family is dying, no use crying. Now, my power is fading. Usurped by the hurt, Mother Earth's now a plaything. For the ungrateful child so cold, ten billion fold, my tears. But I'll continue to spin until my curious homo sapien offspring Pay the price for their sins against my tainted tears, my breathless breath and once fertile skins. Their sorrows are many and murderous. They kill, I kill, one million plus. I never wanted to hurt my children, but their creator makes me take revenge. It's the circle of life, or at least it was. Now it's the end. No. No, it's too late for repentance. Accept your death sentence. I've given you all I can. Such beauty and life you will never have again. Now is the end. Now is the end. Now is the end. Now it's the end. Um, I just want to let you know that I wrote that in 1996. I'm just saying. I'm just saying though. <laughs> um, yeah, peace, one love. You know, peace, one love. To all, the 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 poets are the prophets. I'm you know what I mean? Well, yeah, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Never. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, everybody stay safe, stay well. Um, Praying for everybody. I'm holding the highest intentions for everybody's wellness, for everybody's mental, emotional, spiritual, physical health. I promise you I am. Aja, thank you so much for, you know, convening this moment, holding this moment, holding this space for all of us. And um, wash your hands and your hearts every day, all day. Peace. Thank you, Ursula Walker. Give it up. Please make sure that you support all the poets on the list, find them on their social media, make sure that you look up what they're doing. A lot of us lost gigs, especially these poets, because a lot of these poets that I was able to curate together are gigging poets, poets who make their living off of their gigs, make their living off of community, off of workshops, off of gatherings and being, and, uh, being educators and teachers. So it's a very different ball game than somebody sitting in a 
cabin in the middle of nowhere off of a grant or a fellowship. So <laughs> just make that clear. Um, please support the poets. The next poet I have an honor of introducing. I'm so, so grateful. Like literally um, people always ask me about inspirations and I have many. I always look back to the greats, the elders. Um, th that's the way that keeps me fueled and sustained and inspired. But there are contemporaries, there are, there are people I have had the privilege to cross in my life and my education in my, my, my organizing, my performing. And Jade is one of those poets that I met at Sarah Lawrence College. And I remember hearing her the first time, just the way the words fall off her tongue is literally music. It is like syrup of the soul. And I think she's one of the, the greatest poets of our time and our generation. I'm grateful that she said yes. So please join me in welcoming Jay Flower Foster. Thank you so much, Aja. Um, it means so much to be here. This is my first open mic in years. Um, I forgot I was a poet until now, but my heart is like shaking in my chest. Um, in terms of medicine and homemadeness for us. And to the other poets here, thank y'all for being here. I'm really, really humbled to be in this room. There's almost 200 people on Facebook Live with us right now. Um, I don't know if you guys are like operating different screens to see what's going on, but uh, folks are here and I'm, I'm humbled by that as well. Um, in terms of medicine, I hope that we're taking this time to be quiet and go to our creator, go to our source, as the sister was saying earlier, um, go to God with gratefulness, go to God with praise, but also in the quiet time with God, ask what's required of you um, and what she wants from you moving forward. Uh, this poem is an expert. This is an excerpt from a long poem that, and I'm, I'm humbled by that as well. Um, in terms of medicine, I hope that we're taking this time. I just heard myself as an echo. I don't know why. Someone went uh -huh. up and don't worry, it wasn't your fault. It was oh, our okay. friend who came in and he was he didn't have his mic on mute, but I just muted. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, this is an excerpt from a long poem called From Girl to God. One, the first time I saw a miracle was at a small southern church. Her name was Lily. She was dark skinned with long hair and it was hers. I could tell. It was a miracle. Ever since that day, church was my favorite thing to do. I love the shouting. Insert archival footage of shouting here. I love the music. Insert archival footage of spirituals here. I love the people. Insert archival footage of Black people hugging each other, Black people praying for one another. A girl shouts and a nurse follows with a small square cloth napkin so her skirt doesn't rise too high. Insert me. In the second row, on the left side of the sanctuary, I look up to God, to the heavens, to the hills for help. People always got something to say about dykes. Black women loving each other, raising our children together on purpose. Y'all need to be taking notes. Two, as a teenager, I wondered what everybody felt what they sh when they shouted where the dance came from, the tears. So when the preacher said, say hallelujah, I said, hallelujah. And when the preacher said, say thank you, Lord, I said, thank you, Lord. Insert hands waving, palms waving. I waved, hoping spirit would shower me, bless me, transform me. Do that thing it did when people came in one way and left another. Could it lay me on the altar? Could it run me around the room? But spirit never fell. So when the preacher said, of course you got to have gays in the church. Who going to direct the choir? Everybody laughed. So did I. Three. Two young women push each other on a swing. Higher, higher. Let's call them girl number one and girl number two, even though they are not quite girls at all. Now, girl number one swings alone. She twists up the ropes, kiss, kicks up her feet in the dirt. She lets go and spins. Now, girl number one grabs girl number two. They plop into the backseat of a Buddhist temple, a small man chants. Girl number two plays cat's cradle with a beaded necklace. She rolls her eyes. I don't understand, she says. Where is the music? The room spins. 
Now girl number two is at a mosque and she struggles with the prayers. The Muslim woman make fun. I wanted a God I could tell my friends about. The girl is in the Ifa ceremony now. A priestess circles a live chicken around her face, cracks an egg open on her chest. I wanted a God that could meet my grandmother. Now, a pretty glass bottle of pretty green juice spills. The girl rolls out a yoga mat. I wanted a God that would never leave me, never forsake me. Girl number two leaves girl number one while she sleeps. She packs up quietly and closes the, the door behind her. I wanted a God who liked me, even though I liked girls. Four. The girl returns to a big, beautiful sanctuary with a big black Jesus on the wall. There's only a few people in the congregation, but she sits in the back. When the preacher says, clap, she back in the big and wide sanctuary with the big black Jesus on the wall. She sits in the fourth pew. The girl raises her hand. Now the girl sits in the second pew. This is where her and her mother used to sit. The preacher says, can I get an amen? Amen, the girl says. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah, the girl echoes. Cue sound. You don't have to go nowhere for God's house. You are God's house. Now, did you come here to look cute or did you come here to praise the girl? Shoots out of her seat, lifts her hands and cries out. It's as if spirit has finally fallen on me. Thank you. all Give it up for Jay. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Ache. Fraser, Fraser. <laughs> um, so grateful. Oh, y'all are the most lit poetry reading ever. So thank you. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for reading through the screens and giving us presence. Um, I want to have you all. Okay, so this po so what's really dope about this reading, right? Is that also in the time of me learning to be in you know, community with my fellow young youth poets coming up. There was this show called you know, Deaf Poetry that had come out and we would sit around the, the, the television. I would like, everybody else in the house couldn't give two wits about poems, but I would literally anxiously wait for this show. And I remember when Maida first walked on the screen, okay? I could feel her energy through the TV and I was like, I wanna do what she made me feel with poems. I want to make people feel that way. And I remember that for the, like forever. It's always been one of the things that I carry with me. It is medicine for the soul. And so Maida, I am so honored to have you, to call you a friend, to, um, to see you as an inspiration and as a poet that's so necessary for this time, a spiritual healer that is um, very necessary and timeless. So thank you for joining us. Please join me welcoming Maida Del Valle. Hi, everybody. Oh, wow. I love the faces on the screen. What a fucking amazing collection of people all at the same moment. I love it. Oh, okay, um, I want to get through both of these. So um, this is like a super rough draft. Um, it's a rough, I'm going to read a rough draft. It's very short. Yes. I don't know what is it coming, but I'm going to share it. So um, this is called Three Short Notes on Apocalypse. One, apocalypse is never a single event, not a fireball that wanders through space and wipes out the planet in an instant, not the bomb that blasts or pockmarks a landscape into something like the skin of the moon and sends a cloud across the continents, not even the tsunami Olokun sends with a flippant flick of finger as reminder of how easily land can still be swallowed, not even the hurricane that wipes the forest off Yukahu's face. If our holiest and most revered Santissima Octavia Butler taught me anything, it is that our apocalypse is a God that reveals itself slowly in stages. It is worshiped in the small and steady decay of what makes us human. How when the adoration that sweetens our tongue when we sing our lover's name slowly turns into the timber of resentment. Two, how Chicago knows this God intimately, 
This city, survivor of ash and fire, knows the losses that go unmarked and unspoken, from which there's no sanctuary to be found. This city knows well the schoolyard playgrounds that been filled with ghosts, knows the red brick buildings and worn oak floors of schools with their windows and doors now boarded shut, waiting to be turned into upscale lofts, knows the neighborhoods long abandoned, knows the homes lost to predatory loans, knows the prisons overflowing with our brothers and primos and the people we love and are forced to abandon as well, knows the dialysis centers miles from any fresh food, and no one has ever called this apocalypse. No one has ever feared the ending of our bodies. Three, I watch my mother help my father shave. She squirts a small amount of shaving cream into his hand and says, okay, I'll be back, go ahead. Afeitate. He's forgotten how to use the can on his own and so she helps with this small part now as well. When she returns, he's still standing with a small cloud of cream in his hand. I watch as she reminds him, like this, you have to put it on your face, spread it around. And what of this tiny apocalypse, I wonder, how the mountain of my father slowly withers. What of every ending we watch Papi experience every day, the fading recognition of my mother, of how to make the bed, how to put on a shirt, how to use a zipper, or pick up a sandwich and eat it without a fork. What God do I supplicate for the uncovering of my father's memories? How to conjure him into knowing again that I'm his daughter. How to conjure him back into remembering this is his home. Oh, oh, I see like the ritual claps, it's cool. <laughs> So, um, so this piece I want to read, um, it's really interesting because I, I read it last week. I shared with um, a friend of mine, with my friend Hector, and, um, and, then I, and then a friend of mine called me the other day and was like, um, we'd recorded this for his album, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to do a video with the piece. And we were talking about, um, we were talking about Ogun, we were talking about uh, the Orisha of iron, the Orisha of war, and how we need Ogun's courage right now. We need Ogun's ferocity and Ogun's um, kind of this, this guerrillero mindset because so much of what's being fed to us right now is about propagating fear and scaring us. Um, so this is for Ogun and um, here we go. Corazón hecho en hierro, fuego que abre el camino va. Corazón hecho en hierro, valiente pa' la guerra va. Ogun je y ring, y ring je ogun. Ogun je y ring, y ring je ogun. Ogun je y ring. Espíritu de hierro, espíritu du ferro, spirit of iron, deity of the fire that turns all ore into liquid flame. God of matter made molten, spirit of the cutlass, owner of the knife, sharpened edge that clears the path before us, father who lays our enemies to waste, father who slays our fears, who tramples obstacles to dust, mari wo agano. Father who forges our spines to carry these shrines we call bodies, father of war, who turns the scars of war to honor, father of metal and fight, mari wo agano. Padre de la protección, corazón hecho de hierro, guerrillero, sin miedo, baba. Temper us into warriors like you, who wage war to seek peace, who do not succumb to anguish nor surrender to the wicked, baba. Remind us reconfigured from God's spark, remnants of the origin in the beginning. Remind us the catalyst, the constellations, we ancient prophecy made flesh, seventh generation manifest. Remind us creators like you, who use this hammer to shape our world, use our words to bend our destiny. Remind us how we pour out liquor as libation to consecrate concrete street corners into shrines and front stoops into altars. Show us how to turn dice games into divination and 16 bars into incantation. How the Griot is reincarnated as MC. How our Jinga becomes uprock. Dance floors become Bembe, become Roda, become Cypher, becomes the sacred hoop, becomes the Bate. Listen to every scratch of a record like a ceremony slaying our fears. Every harmony a knife edge that cuts through our grief. Listen to every wail of a horn like redemption. Every remix, a revelation of truth, every note, a rebirth a salvation. Corazón hecho en hierro, fuego que abre el camino va. 
Corazón hecho en hierro, valiente para la guerra va. Ogun je y ring, y ring je ogun. Ogun je y ring, y ring je ogun. Ogun je y ring, ogun ogun ye. Achero! Uh, Shay, low key, you should have gave us a warning. We could have all been out here letting loose. Thank you so much, Maida. That was so wow, powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you for was, having me. Excellent, honey. Very well done. Thank yes. you, Baba. Thank you. Look at the chat. Everybody has some, some words for you in there. Um, thank you so much, Maida. I told y'all she's the illest. She's, she, she really resonates through the screen. That spirit right there, straight talking from the heart. And um, she's in Chicago, Chi-Town. So give it up to all our folks in Chicago who are, who are also grappling with this illness. I think they said it was like 70% of the cases were, were people, of, were Black folks, right? Dealing with yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. there's work to be done. And, and however we can support y'all over there, please let us know. I know Vic is there, so I'm glad y'all can be connected here too. Definitely. Um, moving on, I'm so excited, keep moving. So, you know, going, I didn't really plan this intentionally, but it's ironic because Black Ice is also another poet that I got, I discovered on Deaf Poetry and then saw in community around the way in different events. People wonder how I know people, it's just because I was at, I was one of them poets that would walk through the snow with flip flops to get to a reading type poet. So here, you know, you have it. Um, and Black Ice is someone that, I believe, I'm not sure if this is true. I heard that deaf poetry was conceptualized after Russell Simmons or Stan Lathan or one of them saw Black Ice reading somewhere or something like that. That might not be true, but who knows? That's the myth, that the legend that goes out. And they toured Maida, uh, Black Ice, Lemon, they all toured together there. They won, um, y'all won awards, right? Couple. Yeah, a couple, he said a couple. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be shy now. He's all humble. Tony winner, Tony winner. Get a life, bro. <laughs> uh, Tony, Tony Peabody and Emmy. Oh, oh, just, you know, just a Tony, just a Tony and a, a Peabody and an Emmy. But please join me in welcoming the other Tony winner, because Midas won too, Black Ice. What's up, world? Um, it's, uh, it's, it is now 2 o'clock in the morning where I'm at. I'm in Amsterdam. Uh, I'm from originally from Philly all day, North Philly. Shout. Uh, but I live in Amsterdam. I've been living here for five, for about five years now. Uh, and right now it's like church for me because uh, one, I have so many loved ones here. Um, my big bro, Rich Medina, we've been friends for 25 plus years. Uh, first time I saw, first time I met Rich, he was, he had that voice. It's him, James Earl Jones, and, 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 you know, maybe a couple other people with this voice, you know, and he was spitting poetry and I was like, oh, uh, this is my tribe, and uh, and and Baba Doom, you know, you changed my life. When my pop played "Niggas Are Scared of Revolution" when I was 12 years old, I wasn't the same since. And then full circle, I was riding the back of Twin Poets truck. You was in the front, and uh, and and you gave me my name. So, uh, uh, shout out to you. I love you, uh, Mida. You my little sister. You know, you already know. Vic Mintz, I'm a fan. Uh, Sunny. You're one, of the, you're one of the truest spirits I ever met in my life. Uh, you, you, you inspire people when, you're, when people are around you. You gently force them to be the best person they could be, if only for the moment they're around you. You know I love you. Uh, uh, Musa, welcome home, bro. Yeah. Urs, you like one of my super inspirations. So anyway, I could go on about that. I'm supposed to do poetry, right? So this can get weird. Um, uh, uh, so I, I'm gonna have I'm gonna rattle off a couple pieces real quick. My pieces are not long. Uh, I've been doing a lot of writing. What I will say about to everybody, to the world, is I I I, I want to inspire everybody that in this time that we are all plugging up to unplug, and 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 to take a real selfie, and to you know and take stock of yourself, and uh, and really dig in to who you are. Um, this is the time to evolve. Uh, so yeah, I wrote a haiku for, uh, for, for this whole shit show that's happening right now, uh, for how I feel about it. Um, and it goes, uh, our mother is earth, 
Maybe she's using us all to make herself whole. It's called collective consciousness. That's that one. Um, secondly, uh, I have an amazing mom and I wasn't gonna do this, but uh, my mom, she's watching. She may be, she may not be. Uh, she is the pastor of a church in Roosevelt, Long Island. And they've lost about five or six people to this whole thing. Uh, several more people being, uh, you know, that are hospitalized. And uh, my mom is amazing. And I just wanted to, uh, to give her that, you know, because she's a shepherd of a flock. And I know that she's heavy right now. And I, I want to let her know that, that she is doing the work and that if that her son is proud of her, you know. So it's for you, mom. Uh, Pastor Linda Manson, I've pondered all day what I could possibly write about you, to you, for you. My mother, miracle worker of oatmeal, nurturer of all things living, personification of a phoenix, taught your sons to appreciate fondue and Yahtzee and theater and art and music and learning and church, more importantly, spirit and family and laughter and lessons. My mother, lover of earth, wind and fire, and Angela Bofill, and Mays, and Frankie Beverly, and Cool, and Cool in the Gang, and Neighborhood Bar Nostalgia, and Champagnes, and Club El Dorado, and Wild Bill, and George, and Bunny, and Leslie, and Miss Valerie, and Miss Debbie, and Miss Cynthia, and The Impulse, and dancing, and music on Saturday mornings, and dancing, and jazz, and Bobby McFerrin, Sweet in the Morning Lover, and, Duke, and George Duke, Lover for No Rhyme, No Reason, and Earl Klug, and George Benson, Lover of the Masquerade. My mother said, write about it draw about it, dance about it, run about it, sing about it, own it, your shit, own it, faults and greatness and trial and triumph and trying, said never be afraid of God or your gifts or fear or nature or work ethic or humility, said live, on pur live your purpose on purpose without apology or excuse, said believing is not enough, know who you are, my mother, archer of four arrows, straight and brilliantly crafted, designed with powerful intent, intricately individual, our tips elaborately sharp and beautifully unique. My mother, bow of tremendous strength and power and fine tuned tra trajectory. Pastor Linda Bernice Manson, my mother, you are fine art and music and dancing and enlightenment and laughter and common sense and perseverance and beauty. I've pondered all day about what I could possibly write about you, to you, for you, that could possibly, that could possibly in some minuscule way begin to define the incredible, incomparable, incomparable, wonderful, real, super fly woman that you are. I hope this serves as a worthy start. Uh, um, I also, so yeah, so I don't have enough, I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm gonna do. Uh, somebody asked me to do this piece. It's an old piece, and uh, uh, so yeah. Uh, when you look at me and my brothers, what's your first impression? Does the sight of us leave you guessing, or do you understand the stressing, the aggression, the look of no hope on me and my niggas' faces, like the Lord overlooked us when He handed down His graces? You see, embraces fall short on the numb tips of street entrepreneurial fingers, still stuck in the walls of the project halls where the coke smell still lingers. External blingers is all we can be because on the inside we've been given nothing to shine on. And a record deal is harder to get than coke so my niggas get their grind on because the TV tells us aim high, nigga make all goals lateral. You see that takes paper that we don't have so niggas put their souls up as collateral now. Some niggas reclaim them, some blame them, make an excuse to sell them. But when a nigga goes from not doing to doing, what can you tell them? Not to be a nigga. Shit, I gots to be a nigga. That's how I pay the bills. And I'm gonna do that whether I got to sling this coke or exploit these rhyme skills. See, America makes you an opportunist. And at the same time, they institutionalize you. So the fact that niggas get the big record deals, big money, and then go to jail shouldn't surprise you. That's what lies do. And see, most of these guys do have raw talent, just an infantile education. So the business feeds you all the weed and ecstasy and a little bit of paper to provide some pacification from all the bullshit frustration they serve you. Meanwhile, they corrupt your perception of what the real is. See, they've taken all our business Men and giving them the mindsets of drug dealers, took all our messengers, made them rappers, just flapping their jaws, afraid to admit their treason, took all our soldiers for the cause, made them kill us for no reason, and being fucked up, well, that's in this season. So if you're negative, you're positive. And if you're positive, you're called a hater. But I maintain control of my soul because I know it gets greater later. And I told you the last show, shit, nigga no hater. 
I just know where the truth is. Been intertwining this pudding for about a year now, so I know where the proof is. See, it lies in these midtown Manhattan skyscrapers with former hustlers like myself sign papers and pull off fucked up capers like 16 infamous stars at a time. They got us chopping and bagging and serving that shit to niggas 16 bars at a time. Now, the crime is undetectable by the feds because in the heads of our kids is where the track is. And music is potent. It's straight to the soul, so it's much more addictive than crack is. Now, the high is just an illusion. All lies in confusion, but the feel that rush just once my young bucks to go through it so in essence they still flooding the streets with the thugs drugs and killing they just use these record labels to do it taking our heartfelt demos putting us in limos trying to fuck up divine divine distinction, but young men have been trained to trace money and pussy, so we fall victim to our own erection and begin to convince ourselves that we're on our way somewhere where we're not going, but ignorance is bliss and niggas love this, so niggas take pride not knowing. We not growing. Nigga, I give a fuck how slick you flowing if you ain't showing nothing to these kids or add nothing positive to the earth. Black Ice been destined to touch the world ever since I was born. To be real, fuck a record deal. God gives me what I'm worth. Facts, facts. Classic, classic. That's that crack. <laughs> Man, bro, that's I'm, that's one of the ones. You got to show that that every educator that's watching, make sure all your young wannabe MCs, writers, poets, etc. That's that's one on one, hip hop one on one, right there, poetry one on one. All right, thank you, Black Eyes, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next up, what can I say that can be said that will fulfill what I feel about this woman, okay? I have to say that I told y'all a little bit about how I came to the poetry community starting through um, an organization called Urban Word NYC. On the other side of the country, there was a similar organization, Youth Speaks, that was, was founded with the same movement of folks and um, Shanaka Hodge is a legend from the West Coast. Uh, if you don't know her, you don't know her poetry, you don't know the impact that she's had. She's been a mentor, um, an inspiration, uh, a muse for a lot of lovely songs that y'all probably be rocking to. Well, he come is on, come on. the original uh, amazing author black girl. And yeah. she <laughs> um, someone that every time I'm, I'm, I'm on the West Coast, every chance I get, I try to, uh, squat in her house even while she's there because she is also someone that knows how to make a home knows how to uh, take care of, of her loved ones and her life is a poet poem she lives poetry and how she caters and nurtures to to, to all of us um in this time so i just she there's so much i could say i love you i'm inspired by you thank you for saying yes to this and all of you please support shanaka she's writing some of your favorite television shows right now that you don't even know she wrote for so join me in welcoming to the virtual stage, Shanaka Hodge. I was, uh, I was fine. I was, I was kind of fine and I'm cry. So I'm taking off balance. I, I have a long poem, so I have to keep my gratitude brief, which really unearths me because you guys are all my teachers in really concrete ways. Breon Bain took me to Baba Abio Dun Oyewole's house all through school. I would have to cut out early to go to Urban Warrior Practices to hear Aja Monet spit. I would watch Maida on repeat, put Ursula on every night. Uh, Black Ice and Maida know I would sneak in the Death Poetry on Broadway to see him. Oshu knows that I follow them around wherever they perform when they're in space. Jade already knows it's real than two dollar bills with me. Sunny knows I showed up in New Orleans and went from spot to spot on a three day weekend to see everywhere she performed. She was like, I got to go home now, bye girl. So, um, our men we haven't met, Dean we just did, but y'all are my true life family and I thank you for being the type of knives that sharpen other knives, for being steel. Thank you for your Oshun work. Um, uh, the poem I'm gonna read is a commission from the Haas Center at UC Berkeley. Um, they convene every so often around equity issues and the last convening focused on, or the last convening I attended focused on uh, life 50 years after the Kerner Report. The Kerner Report was a report that came out from the US government um, during the Lyndon Johnson administration about the state of affairs in urban America primarily and ways in which uh, resources would be doled out from, from then on um, have come out of this Kerner Report. So um, I looked at the report, which is a super long document and they asked me for what's changed. And this is the poem that I wrote in very angry response. It's called 10 Good Questions. 
One, better you know now from where I write live from the first mixed home in the last black neighborhood on the West Coast. You ain't traveled nowhere unless you live under the thumbtack of LAPD, see how only this swath of the county is policed by copter, how the adobe shakes and water bugs sewer scatter when threatened awake by the blades cracking sky. We live underfoot, they wear boots. How here do we not see ourselves as perennially exterminated nearly? Two, so what you mean what happened? What you mean how far we've come? What yardstick made to measure the foul and rank of this? When you start assessing root cause and epicenter, I wonder if you started with the bodies on the bottom of the pile. Start with the first brave to jump ship. Start maybe with addicts or Addie Mae. Begin with the body of the good Dr. King with the riots in 67 and talk timeline. What's decades to a centuries old grudge? The dead are unaware of how many corpses stack on top. 50 years, 100 years, five, same, same. Everyone we are made to sit and call out for dignity. Three, we black, Samoan, Salvi, Mexican, Hmong, Mien, Lao, Nicaraguan, Taiwanese, Thai, Habesha, Korean, Nisei, Sansei, mixed race, queer, out, State owned, still black, still black, what it feel like all this time and specificity, all these borders, all this scholarship, all these decades, still black, still back seated, still on the other side of the country, all us on one side of society, all them over there. When do we dance? Has it been 50 years already for? Please don't ring my doorbell this time of night asking about solidarity, none to spare. Can't find my head amidst all these pink caps like pussies even never came no other color. Every one of these marshes feel like a ceiling I can't crack. Brown lips what birth and feed me even now. Let me say it directly. White women ain't checked for me yet. Spent the last two years drying your tears on the back of our bench boards. When you found out you was black too, me too, except not black, and your country still hates you. Let me find out you feel unsafe, still a violation to speak it standing. Why does everyone who matters want women on their knees? Five, unless we are black, then we are told to squat, but not to like it, to swallow, but not to pray, to kneel, but no protest, sling the rock, catch the ball, watch your mouth, you son of a bitch. Six, we don't want nothing, nothing. We don't want nothing, nothing. We don't want nothing at all from you. We want Sundays back. The crisp fold of church program through an auntie's pinch, snapped into fan and praising. We want sanctuary in our AMEs. We want silence when we question Jesus. We want to add a blessing to the readers and the hearers. We want Dylan Ralph to come in and see us in our new church robes and smell God and never have thought about a gun in the first place. We want our grandma safe at Bible study. Do you understand the humiliation it is to beg this aloud? Seven, can't say no progress. Can't say nothing, not a dent. Can't say only in anger and not acknowledge. Let me run it down in fast order. Yup, Wakanda. Yup, Lena Waithe. Yup, Kamala. Yup, John Lewis. Yup, Steph, Dre. Amen. Kahende portrait and Michelle's ongoing shade. Say word parade. Say joy and mean it. Say Noel sisters both. Say William sisters both. I'm about it, about it, about it. But the question isn't will we thrive in deficit? Duh. The question is how long? How long? How much more? How long? Eight. I'm asking for my grandfather who would have been nearly Jimmy's age if Baldwin had survived it all. I'm asking for Warren, who unlike his, unlike his wife of ages lived past the Obama administration, who sent his son to school in Cleveland amidst the riots, served in the military, raised God-fearing patriots. I'm asking for Grandfather Warren, who alone outlasted the honeymoon, who owns hooded clothing and stands 6'5 in the dark. I'm asking for my nearly 90-year-old grandfather who will be black and male still when they come for him in the night. Nine, this is down, but that's how I feel. There are solutions in other poems, meaning in the teeth being bashed out of some child's face at the border. Can we move the dial if our honesty is not as boorish and graceless as their hate? I'm tired. When is the luxury of fatigue coming to my side? 10, last question, maybe a few more. The best so far, even in our exhaustion, don't we know what comes next? Haven't we seen a demi-century of proven and misproven tactics? When will we use what works from the other side? Won't the music get better? Won't the hideouts become more secluded? Are we afraid of our success? How many bodies will be too much? Won't the living live more? Won't the workers huddle up? Is there a chance we could win? Is there a chance we could win? Is there a chance? Wow. Damn girl. You don't you don't brought it to the okay.
we we pulling up whatever knot sleeves we got because <laughs> I'm hot as fuck. Bro. <laughs> That's how you know you work the poem because you done worked it out. Like it's physical. It's a physical labor. People be thinking poetry is all mental and 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 in the head, but it's actually with your body that we be writing these poems. So thank you, not for like getting me there. I just wrote in the chat like. This is what makes me makes me miss being on the mic is when I hear somebody spit so raw that I'm like, I want to go home and write. You know, I want to go home and spend time with my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you so much for this offering. I just as you said that she used her body with the poem. The poem was a body slam dunk. <laughs> <laughs> so once upon a time, Baba o Abi Odun came out to to the Bay Area and it performed at a club called the Upper Room, which was operated, it was a, a free or a club made for brown people, no alcohol, all poetry all the time. It was our equivalent in the Eureka. And then he and Pharaoh came to the house and they shared poems at our house late night after the Upper Room closed. I think I might've been 11. I had a crush on Pharaoh for sure, but that was the moment I decided I wanted to be a poet. Well, you know what? That was a wonderful moment. Thank you for it too. <laughs> So well, before I had uh, posted about this event, I, I'm probably gonna cry by the end of this, but I had stated that there was so much poetry in this actual reading that I organized because of the layers of connection and the layers of life coming full circle um, in, so, in so many ways that I can't even tell. Like I could write a full story about all y'all and I know you all can write stories about each other. So thank you all for sharing these stories and giving context to how meaningful this moment is, not just for, for those who are watching, and thank you to everyone who's watching, but also for each of us as we work through this moment and how we're healing. And Pops, thank, light, yeah, keep lighting one up for me, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the next poet coming, well, actually, before we go, we're gonna take a little breather, cause not just like, knock the wind out of us. Um, so I wanted to welcome to um, basically our space, I know, some people have heard, if you do not know, please donate. We are taking donations via Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. I think that it's on the website. It's in the Eventbrite, but just in, in the event, Facebook event, um, just in case you don't know, the Cash App is Poetry for the People, the Venmo is Poetry for the People, and the only difference is Smoke Signals Studio for PayPal. We're taking donations because we've been working prior to this story going viral, but we've been working with Armin Henderson from South Florida, who is a dream defender, um, a local community hero, because he's been, I don't have healthcare, and he's definitely been a doctor that I have called all hours of the night to tell him, ask him random crazy questions <laughs> when I'm scared and spending too much time on WebMD looking up my symptoms. Um, and he's been someone that has, has been a resource to the community. He always shows up and does whatever needs to be done. And the, the last, within the last week, um, so to give some context, he's been working to provide care and food and uh, showers, as well as testing, COVID-19 testing to the houseless community here in South Florida, particularly in the Overtown area. Um, and we've been volunteering, he volunteers every Friday to provide these services. Last week, Friday, he was outside of his home preparing for those, uh, for to give his civil disobedience service, because some parts of Florida, you can get um, locked up or given a, 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 a summons or something for feeding the homeless. Um, and so we know that it is an act of civil disobedience to take care of the homeless. And Armin um, is doing that civil disobedience. The police stopped him and profiled him uh, while he was sitting outside of his home, trying to, not sitting, moving things outside of his home into his van to get ready to to, to provide services for the community. And that video, luckily, thank God, he had video in front of his home as well. Ha uh, his wife was home to help deescalate the situation. So we don't know what could have happened had he not had video to tell the story. Um, and I'm really grateful that he's a friend, he's a comrade, he's someone I look up to, inspires me to no end, and that he's here to talk to us a little bit about the work that he's doing and ways that folks can get involved, as well as give some um, consolation to people who, are, who have questions about basically how to respond to this moment as Black folks. So as a doctor, thank you, Dr. Armin Henderson, for joining us tonight. Hey, Aja, thank you so much uh, for having me. Um, I want to thank all of the, uh, the poets and, and the wordsmiths uh, that basically went before me. 
um, especially Chinaka. Wow, you you killed it. Um, and uh, wel welcome home, Musa. It's been a long time, Jess. I saw you, uh, Vic Menza. Always great to see you. And uh, Aja, thank you so much for for having this. Um, you know, I'm a doctor, and we, we you know we go through medical school and we we learn how to practice medicine. But honestly, um, knowing what I know about seeing having family around and 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 the the truth in words and the power in words uh, that that really does healing for for people who are in the hospital who are sick um, and who are alone, especially in this time. Words are the most powerful healing uh, mechanism that I've ever seen. Um, so so thank you for for definitely having this. Um, so uh, basically, you know, it was an unfortunate uh, turn of circumstances when I was arrested in front of my home. Uh, basically for, for trying to, uh, to serve the homeless uh, population in Miami-Dade County. Um, but, uh, and, and you know, m many people who've been asking me about what we were doing in the community, they thought that it was just something that actually just came along and, and in all honesty, it, it wasn't. Um, we, we started this after Hurricane Irma. Uh, there's actually a black queer woman, her name is uh, Valencia Gunder. Um, she's really a community hero. Number one, she's been feeding the homeless and, and the houses throughout Miami-Dade County for the last five years in Miami um, and in um, and in Atlanta. And so, you know, through her leadership, basically, I was introduced to, you know, she's from Miami. I'm from Philadelphia. Um, she introduced me to the houses community. Um, and so, you know, through through our, our relationship, we basically were able to cultivate this um, this, organ this coalition of organizations called the Community Emergency Operations Center. And basically what we do is we intervene during crises uh, where the government has not been able to or doesn't want to. And so since 2017, since Hurricane Irma, we noticed that it was a disparate response uh, from the government when it came to black and brown communities, uh, particularly those living um, in Liberty City, Opelika, Miami Gardens, and Overtown, uh, which are the black communities throughout Miami-Dade County. Um, and, and from that time, we basically, you know, were our own crisis uh, unit, basically. Um, she fed over 30,000 individuals. I was with her in 2017. I'm sorry, that, that's my son in, in the background. Um, in, in 2017. And, uh, and, and basically, we, we normally activate during hurricane season, but, but during this time, we actually ended up uh, activating during the pandemic. And uh, basically, you know, we, we saw that in Miami-Dade County and really every city across, across the world uh, or across the, uh, the United States was saying that, oh, you need to shelter in place and, and, uh, and, you know, you need social distancing. But if you are houseless, it's almost uh, an impractical feat. It's, it's impossible uh, to do. Um, and so there was all these contingency plans in place for other, other individuals and, and they left out um, the houseless population, which is which is a large population in Miami-Dade County. And so basically what we've been doing is uh, we've been giving out tents, we've been giving out food, uh, we've been giving out toiletries, we've been also testing uh, individuals who are on the street as well, um, and really just showing them that we haven't forgotten about them, that they are a vital part of our, our community, um, even if they are you know, marginalized at this time. And, uh, and, and the response has been so great from individuals who have come together um, to, to basically serve this population. Uh, but many would look at it as a feel good story, but it, it's not, um, it, especially during the pandemic, we felt as though the government should have been uh, particularly interested in this, in this population because these are the people that, you know, are sleeping on uh, bus stops and, and, uh, and frequenting restaurants in the neighborhood. And so if, if you're trying to get the virus under control, you have to pay close attention um, to this population. And we've seen in other, in other places how you know, uh, shelters have been cleared out because individuals have tested positive, both in, in community shelters and then also in jail as well. And, and so, you know, it, it's just a, an act of, of civil disobedience because in Miami-Dade County, we're, we're not even, we can't even serve them uh, with, with uh, there's a law that says we're not supposed to serve them food and that police can basically arrest them for pitching a tent. And so, you know, I'm using all this media attention that I've garnered over the last couple of days to have a press conference on Friday and to really call attention to individuals and, uh, and state and county and city governments that have failed these individuals. 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to take the energy with me um, that, that, I'm, that I've gained, uh, not only through, you know, throughout serving um, Miami-Dade County over the last five years, but also uh, from this poetry reading. And, and I'm, I'm glad to, to have you all. Um, and yeah, I mean, if there are any questions or anything like that, please let me know. Thank you, Armin. Thank you for the work you're doing every day. Also, definitely it's important to shout out Valencia, Gunder, if you are watching. Uh, we love you. You're a local hero. I know you'd love to be um, mentioned in the same breath of Fannie Lou Hamer. You are Fannie Lou. We, um, we, we know that the work that you, you do yearly for the houseless community is integral in making sure that folks have dignity, decency, and love, and are shown care. Um, the most vulnerable is who is important right now, and there are so many of our folks who are vulnerable. In addition, folks who aren't houseless, um, are, it's one of the things that really hit me the most was like going through Overtown and walking, walking through the community with you and seeing like folks who do have homes, but there's multiple people in the home. There's folks with um, bare minimum living conditions. They don't have, we're in South Florida, it is hot. They said this is gonna be one of the hottest years uh, of uh, ever. And um, people don't have AC, people don't have fans. Um, so there are, you know, we, went, we, we brought an a elder into, drove an elder into his home before we came to see you. And there was multiple kids running around and multiple adults in the house. And so I think a lot of people aren't considering the fact that, yes, some people are going through the emotional, uh, uh, psychological and mental realities of dealing with being, um, having to deal with stay at home and social distancing. And then there's the physical, real physical realities of what people are dealing with in terms of um, the conditions in which people are living long before this moment. So people have been living in these conditions long before this moment. And this is just exasperating the tension and the stress um, and the frustration with the lack of it, the lack of care and investment from our government and from uh, local officials. So this is one of the reasons why it is important that all of us get vocal and engaged in our local po uh, political landscape and push our local politicians to make sure that the most vulnerable are being taken care of. Um, mutual aid funds are going on. Please get involved with the, uh, with the work that Armin is doing and Dream Defenders. All of these poetry readings, we are raising funds to help support for the tents. Um, what else do you have, Armin? There's food. If people have- toiletries, uh, we're setting up showers and porta potties. Um, we are also putting uh, disabled individuals and elderly um, and those at highest risk with, with multiple comorbidities and motels and hotels. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we're, we're, we're also, we're thinking about setting up a tent encampment um, and uh, we, we're gonna act, we're gonna keep on doing this in this capacity until, until we force the government to act, until we embarrass them into, into acting. Yeah. And so, so yes, you know, it, it, is, it is imperative that we do push our local governments because, you know, on TV, people are saying, oh, because black people have more comorbidities than other individuals and stuff like that, um, that these, these are the reasons why we're, we're succumbing to the virus uh, more, more uh, at a higher rate. But in reality, it's also, it's also due to government inaction, you know, because government laws and ordinances forced us to live in close, in close quarters or, or put uh, or built our neighborhoods on top of land that were that were, that were sewage dumps um, or waste sites um, or or areas where where they could direct resources or not direct resources. Um, th these are the reasons why we're suffering uh, from from those things. So don't don't blame us. You know the food is a remedy uh, to to what to what we've been through, and, and under that is is the racism, the systemic racism, um, and the system that has worked to to hold black people down. But it's only because of, uh, you know, communities like this that we're able, you know, people wonder like how we've been through so much and, and we're still here and we're still strong. And it's really because of communities like this, because, because of words, because of wisdom passed down from, from our family members. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I, I salute you for having this and definitely important in any, any way that I could support you and what you're doing, then definitely I'll do it. Oh, thanks, Armin. We love you. We appreciate you. Let us know if we, if Poetry for the People needs to bring some words to the to the hospital. 
Um, I'm down to bring poems to the hospital. I'm down to write poems and letters to people who are, are in the hospital. I'm yeah. sure some of the people on here are down to do that. Um, we can make that part of what we do with Homemade. That, that would be, it would be an honor to do that. And um, in addition to that, I think that there are some homemade remedies that people want to share. So we're going to continue to, to gather some of them. A big thing that Black folks need to, we've always been about, but we need to just make sure we're taking our extra care with it. At least Caribbean folks know this. Sea moss, moringa, and there is a, a African Congolese um, plant called bitter leaf. Um, which is really, 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 really good. It's known for malaria, but it has all these other health benefits. And it's the way that the folks in the Congo are currently trying to um, address this. I want to shout out Layla, because you would not be who you are without a good woman behind you. Layla, where are you at? You there somewhere? <laughs> she acting like she don't want to get up. But everything you just mentioned, she got all that. So I'm <laughs> hey. Hi, Layla. It's hey, nice. It's thanks to you that he's still alive. So we're going to go. And we'll put and send, us, send us your remedies. Okay. There's, there's another uh, plant called the leaf of life out of Jamaica. And I just got turned on to it by a friend of mine who has a house in Jamaica. It's called the leaf of life. Okay. The leaf of life. All right. We're writing that one down. I also want to share elderberry and elderflower. Um, if you're looking for a hot beverage, a drink made from elder elderberry or elderflower is just good for respiratory in general and good for clearing nasal sinus, sinus everything. It's not going to cure everything, but it can't hurt to add it to your daily practice. And we, we've done it in my family for years. And when we, we cut it out, we really notice it. And, and let me say this, uh, you know, when they killed Dr. Sebi, they killed a major spirit, a major healer. And I think the whole world knows that. But when they kill someone of that magnitude, all they really do is just, just distribute him amongst us all. So all of us have to be a Dr. Savy right now. And what we need to really do, because the brother, uh, the brother doctor who was just speaking, I'm in, in total admiration for everything you're doing is so much, it's so needed and it's so selfless. It's the kind of work that a lot of people don't want to be involved with. Dealing with the homeless, feeding them, trying to help them survive when they've already checked out, many of them, and just said, I'm not down with the game. I mean, that's very, very important that we try to give life to those who decided that life isn't worth it. It's important that we still try to do everything we can to inspire and uplift our people. That is a very necessary thing, but we've got some brothers and sisters in this country who've got serious money. There's no question about it. All those athletes, even if they're not playing, they're making cash money. There's no reason in the world that we should be begging or struggling to do anything good for our folks. We need to all get on board. I am hoping that this coronavirus has caused enough pain and misfortune and hurt and pain to the point where we can recognize the only healing factor we have is each other. And the only antidote for all this is our love. Our love can take us beyond places that other people can't even imagine. It's because of the love that we've always had for the spiritual aspect of our existence and the sacredness of each other that has allowed us to survive for over 600 years. They got an orange clown in the White House who doesn't know anything at all about love. They don't have the capacity for love. We are loving people by nature, and we need to share that. And all those folks who have resources, all the ball players, not just LeBron James, every one of them need to recognize that we've got healing aspects here that need to be supported, need to be endorsed in every possible way. And unfortunately, we're in a world where finances make a difference. Those finances need to be used to help us develop, grow, and sustain our beautiful existence on planet Earth. Thank you. Thanks, Pops. <laughs> I ain't never ever gonna argue with her elder giving me a word because I need a sermon. I don't know about y'all, but I need a word. Thank you so much, Armin. Um, and we are about to move into the next little half. I think... Um, there is not much introduction needed, but the, he, he is a legend and known to be a legend primarily on the ones and twos these days. He's a DJ. He probably has had you boogie, woogie, woogie uh, all night um, in many different clubs and dance spaces and parties and um, house, house parties, et cetera. But for me, 
Rich, the one thing I love about how you play is that I believe you're a poet uh, with the ability, with turntables. You have the ability to take your poetic lens and, and sensibility, because poets are truly not just about writing the poem, but it's also a way of moving in the world. It's how we approach every facet of our lives. And I think the way that you approach um, what you do, the way that you approach the ones you love, the way that you approach community, it's with a poetic lens. So whether or not you've shared a poem in a long time in terms of a written poem, you have always been a poet in my eyes. I know that you started at the New Yorican and you've been a part of that community from the very inception, a bunch of MCs owe their you know, lyrical and inspirational debt to you. Um, but it's an honor for me to actually have you here. I've been trying to get you to read poems for a very long time. So I, am, I can't wait for people to hear you in this moment. Thank you for being a real one, um, being, being a comrade, a, a brother, a friend. And um, thank you for actually really getting me to dance to the point of tears at, at times. Um, you have truly liberated me like through dancing. There has been moments where I, from the moment you got on to the moment you end, I am sweating and in tears of joy. I have never danced like that with anybody ever and since. So thank you for your poetic gift, my brother, and thank you for continuing to offer that gift. And here, join me in welcoming my brother, Rich Medina, to the virtual stage. That's amazing. Um, I'm so moved by the opportunity to be here, uh, by the invite. Uh, Aja, you're 100% correct. You've been at me for 15 years. Yeah, what's up with the poetry? What's up with the performing? You getting on the mic tonight? You getting on the mic tonight? What's up? What's up? And, um, you know, I've been reticent. And uh, we haven't spoken about it much beyond it being an ongoing joke between us, but the writing never stopped. Um, it kind of went from performing in the arena that we all, a lot of us cut our teeth in together. I could go on a whole week long lecture about what I know about some of the people in this forum and their work over the years and how we've cut our teeth and watched, watched each other grow and come into the artists and people that we are today. So it's super humbling to be here with you now and to realize that I, I you know, People change over the years and, you know, you get finished with kindergarten and you go to first grade, you go to second grade and things advance, but certain things sit consistent. And one of those things is the ability to deliver a point that allows folks that might not have the capacity to deliver it in the same manner, have definitely felt it probably in a more poetic manner than those of us that can express it outwardly. So it's a, it's a real, privilege that we have to have the opportunity to, to share our point of view with people and to hopefully uh, leave people, when you leave people, leave them better than they were when you found them. No matter what their condition is, when they come across your path, our obligation at this point, <laughs> considering the space that we've put ourselves in, is to leave folks better than they were when we found them. Or kick rocks. There's no dimmer, there's no voodoo, there's no dancing around accountability. And I'm humbled to be around a bunch of people who take that accountability very seriously on a regular basis when things are great. And uh, it's nice to be coming together with you all now to share some thoughts and some things that can hopefully put a battery in somebody's back and uh, you know, help somebody turn that corner, you know what I mean? We all need that. Um, I'm really humbled to be here. Uh, I'll share a piece that I wrote. Jesus, I wrote this in 1995. But it's very interesting how fitting it is today, uh, particularly for the condition of young men of color and the definition of justice. We make it look easy, but right here in our back pockets, we carry the weight of the entire world. At the same time, we wear targets knitted of hatred on our backs. 
and walk a land we're told is not really our own. Continually trying to make contact with understanding on the line. But my phone has been ringing for 50 some odd years and I still can't get in touch with myself. I got fast food crawling through my system, constipating my bankroll. I got questions racing across my mind and every once in a while, a crash course answer will come along and hospitalize my culture. And they keep telling me, hey, you better slow down, boy. You're moving too fast. Hey, you better slow down for some bad times jump on your ass. And, you know, to be honest, I want to slow down. But every time I try that, I can see the Republicans over there setting up for a drive-by. <laughs> My bad. They actually already pulled up and popped the trunk of a German-made sports car with the remains of Social Security in the trunk, firing at black backs to lighten the night. And I can't run because my armor is too shiny and it often sags beneath my ass at the wrong damn time. I can't run because the weight of the world pressed up against my ass is heavy. I ain't no punk shit. If you ain't careful, I just might bust a cap in your mind or stab your procrastinations with a blade smote of glorious active metals. But since you're in denial of the fact that I got a target on my back anyway, do me a solid and read the cleaning instructions on that dashiki for a crash course in generation mill intelligence and pro-black convenience store stupidity. Kente cloth don't grow on no assembly lines. But the questions, you know, they linger like visitors with well-worn out welcomes. It's always like, did he really do that? Girl, does he have any money? Oh, what you got, Indian in your family? Say, man, you got any weed? <laughs> I do. But you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do or wear or think can and shall be used against you in a court of public opinion. You can go get a lawyer on your own, but you may as well let a court appoint you one. Anyone you get on your own will judge you and jail you in legal fees and rhetoric. See, the problem is most of us are laying on our deathbed, reaching behind it, trying to pull out the plug ourselves. Every time you give me the opportunity to slow you down and arrest your mind with the truth, I'm doing the best I can for both of us, bro. Now get the fuck in the car. Rich Medina. I can't believe you just did a poem. I'm so honored. Thank you. Yes. I'm humbled by you guys. I moved. Um, I haven't gone anywhere. Uh, thank you, Aja, for keeping your finger in my eye about my writing. And uh, I, I promise you, I'm not going to let you down. I'm about to hear about thank, thank, thank you, brother, for the, the reality of your piece. It thank was rich. You. It, you know, it was rich with a, a certain kind of feel for for who we are as a as a people. The you know, we're people so who are governed basically by, by vibrations, and as far as I'm concerned, and the vibe was rich with that piece. It was a very important piece in recognizing, you know, the inner self and who we really are. And uh, I appreciate what you're doing, but I appreciate your style because. If we don't have style, you know, it's not worth watching, you know? Thank you, brother. I'm humbled yeah. by that, man. I'm humbled by you and, uh, you know, you the torch, man. You lit the flame. You know, all of this is on your back, on the low. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is beyond humbling to be in your presence. You're an international treasure. You've always brought value and content to the table in the face of the sheep. And but all I all I can say, brother, I appreciate what you're saying, but I try to tell you all the time, I'm only doing my assignment. Everybody has an assignment. And all I want to do is live up to my particular assignment. I didn't know I was going to be no goddamn poet. <laughs> you all did that shit to me. I was planning to be a doctor. I had other ideas about my life in a whole different situation. 
I did a couple of poems and people said, woo! And I said, woo! And I figured maybe this should have worked, I guess. I could be a poet. I didn't know that. My high, my high school teacher told me I was a poet. And I heard her and I didn't hear her. And I, and then you all decide. You all said, we want you to be a poet, nigga. What could I do? I'm trying to be a good goddamn poet. I mean, and I'm doing it because you all have made me be this person. And when I run to people like Ajwane, these are nothing but angels. I got poetic angels all around me. I don't even know half of their names. But they're angels and they have that. And, and, and Aja, you mentioned before, everything has got to have a poetic feel. Every single one of us, especially those of you who had on here tonight, you know, poetry is like a spice that you got in your cabinet, but right next to the salt and the black pepper. You put that, that spice has got to be in your cabinet. And everything you do, you take some of that spice out of your cabinet and you sprinkle it on that particular activity. And you'll be surprised at the joy because the poetry of a human being is the essence of his existence on this planet. That's all poetry is. It's always been that. And people give it fancy names and get constipated with all kinds of weird understandings. It ain't weird. It is the language of the innate human being who recognizes his humanity. Woo, facts. Woo. Drop the mic. <laughs> Well, that's a perfect introduction into the next poet, um, who is, uh, uh, I mean, I remember, this is the only poet I've ever seen come to a poetry reading, almost every poetry reading I've ever seen with baby full on wrapped, full on wrapped in the middle of reciting entire bars and baby be sleep, like baby be like, home, yes, peace. This is this is normal. This is a Tuesday for me. This is a Thursday. This is just life. And yeah. she literally feeds her children poems. Like they live off of her poems. And not only her physical, biological children, we are the children of all these words that she has blossomed and planted mm -hmm. into her community. I remember the first time I've ever heard Sunny Patterson was on a deaf poetry show as well. And mm -hmm. um, seeing her live in the New Eurekan shifted me like in my heart, my core, I felt I had seen a spiritual sister. She didn't know who I was or when we would ever meet, but I knew that when I saw her, that I had found someone in my tribe and I reconnected mm -hmm. and was brought back to a source, something deeper and deeper mm -hmm. than, than any understanding of self. And I just want to thank you for saying yes. Thank you for continuing to put your pen to the page and continuing to, to, to offer us um, not just creative words, but creative beings into the world. You are an incredible mother, an incredible um, sister, an incredible, or I believe you are organizer with words. Thank you for joining us. Please join me in welcoming to the literal virtual stage, yeah. Sunny Patterson. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sis. Thank you for um, just your vision, your heart, your spirit. Um, just, just your you what it is that you do. Thank you, just everybody. Um, we, I put that in the chat. You know, they say that thank you is the, 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 the highest prayer. So um, I just uh, thank you. That's it for, for you. Um, I'm just thinking about this time, um, you know, and just for, again, for all of you just being culture bearers, right? We know that culture is um, this barrier that protects us. Uh, from the harsh realities um, that we're able to be protected through the psychic way that we're able to be protected through the spiritual way that we're able to be protected through this poetic way. So I'm just giving thanks for all the culture bearers and all of the people that um, uh, that that hold up the light, that hold up the words. Thank you, Baba. Baba, you 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 claim you're not a doctor, but you know we know better. So I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you going going through and getting your PhD in poetry. <laughs> And, 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 and shifting us, um, you know, with, with, with your healing words and with your light. Um, we, are never, we are never without a, a, a word from you. So I appreciate that, um, Baba Abiyotong. Um, you know, I think about, again, just with this time and how they keep saying that, you know, Black folk are dying. And thank you to the brother, to, to, to the doctor, uh, you know, who just mentioning this, 
this condition, how we're talking about, oh, black folk with pre-existing conditions. Well, the, the reality is that America has a pre-existing condition. So it's no coincidence that we're seeing, um, you know, pneumonia. Um, when I think about this, I think about having the unfortunate blessing, I guess, of hearing my father take his, you know, his last breaths, right? So I know that pneumonia is a sign of the last of days. Um, so I'm not, I'm not getting on this apocalyptic tip, like saying, okay, these are the last of days. But what I also know is that this might not be the quote unquote last days, but I know that we are forming um, into a new people as a result of what it is that we're, that we're seeing, what it is that we're feeling, what it is that we're experiencing. So, you know, this pre-existing condition that America has, uh, this fight that America uh, is going through, uh, when it comes down to the snap and crackle of, of, of breath, when it comes down to lungs and just even what that means metaphysically and spiritually, the lungs, how the lungs deal with grief, how the lungs deal with depression, how the lungs deal with what breathes life into us and so forth and so on. And right now what we're seeing is all of these people all over, all over, all over, struggling, struggling for breath. Um, struggling to be able to grieve properly, struggling to be able to hold up the light, struggling to be able to hold the culture. So I'm grateful to be amongst a group um, that can bring uh, words because they say sometimes we need words more than we need pills, more than we need antibiotics, more than we need uh, mucinex or whatever, <laughs> you know, that can come forward to, to get rid of all of this, all of this other stuff. So um, uh, I, I want to start with a, a song. Uh, something short for um, Babalu Aye. Babalu Aye is, is, is who we petition in uh, Yoruba thought and, and cosmology um, when it comes down to epidemics uh, and, and, and sickness and disease in essence. And even when we hear this epidemics, I'm, never mind, we, we'll come back to that. We'll come, that. That's for another homemade. We'll come back to all that. But, but um, I bet it could to how I let it so. A bere kutu awa lere so ore baba baba lu aye awa lere so ore baba and when they read of this moment when they read of this moment they will see how we endured and they will wonder how we made it how we could live through such a time and still smile and create and celebrate even though walls of panic and loss continue to build up around us they will shake their heads in astonishment they will question how we survived without hugs and second lines and community gatherings. They will drum up every conspiracy theory and most of them will be correct. They will feel the anger of the era, the frustration of the season, and they will pick apart the science and discover to their surprise, oh, there was much more hidden. This virus was a disguise. They will tremble at the revelation and tears will come to their eyes for they will see the essence of the living and of those who have also died and oh, when they read of this time. Let them feel, let them feel that our ancestors are breath, that they are bridge, that they carry us over tumultuous time. You who can hear and answer with quick remedy, you are ready before we ask. You who can speak through tongues of trees and fire and water, this earth cannot hold you. We pound the ground and you appear, O oh ancient ones. You who can make lightning strike with the flick of a skirt, you who can make tornado turn with the spin and span of hips take us there to the place of knowing, to the hall that leads to the doorway of you, O oh holy ones, you of the first light. You who know the potential of possibility pulsing in the dark, deliver us unto our gifts. You who have sunlight in your fingertips, touch our drums, make us hear the rising, make us move a steady stump, acquire a choir of voices so majestic, heaven hides us in a tapestry of light, oh, we are stars blankets of wonder, sky bright eyes seeing the invisible, visible, you who have returned, you have turned our faces so that we see ourselves and we have found you again in places we would have never imagined. You make our limits infinitely long. Our vision is clearer with eyes closed and even there, you still stand in full color, vibrant and eager to serve. Musa, this is for you. Um, Brother, thank you for being here and, 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 and listening to us as well. Musa, um, um, in all his majesty and might, 
his brilliance and his beauty, his black and his blue. Boy still slips from their lips when they address him, still linger in the velvet of his dreams, the seen unseen black boy fighting for manhood in a world that still sees through Jim Crow lens or them love him in his place. Separate, away, torn, disconnected. This, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Torn, disconnected, submissive, and shuffling. Now just turn that shuffling into dancing, cause you know them love black boys dancing and singing and bawling. You know them love black boy strength, but don't love black boy. Don't love black boy, don't love black boy. So now him, him drifting in the wind, searching for himself in places that never allow him to be himself. So now black boy scared of his own shining black reflection, but we don't call you a son for nothing. Black boy radiates sacred wonder. We see you shining star in the mirror of your own eyes and ours. Your manhood is manner, is sinew, is potent, it's pure. Black boy proud of the black man he has become we see you a pillar in the place of crumbling remains oh black man you reign an effervescent dude that wakes the world we honor you and bear witness to your power but now her now her right they wanted her they wanted her piecemeal, paper mache practically broken, limp-like, and loveless, a litany of exaggeration. They wanted her low and high, flat and wide, filled with all of their empty. They wanted her to be more like them, not knowing her conception was immaculate, that she was birthed in sandalwood, scented river water, sweet sapphire, honey-touched tongue. Oh, she was too much of a mouthful for the greedy. Just a small amount of her was more than they could stand. Oh, they wanted her bland and barren, unspirited, un-African, uncultured, under siege in the streets. They wanted her face down, ass up, hands cuffed and ankles strapped. They wanted her knowing she could never want them back. Oh, they wanted her wholly baptized in her divine. They wanted her secrets, pearls to swine. They wanted to unravel the mystery of her design. Fascinated by glory, hypnotized by her kind. They wanted her complete. They wanted her whole, though they came fraction, half-hearted, half-soul with no regards and no knowledge as to who she really was. Oh, but if they knew, if they knew her, Praise songs would rain from the clouds of their eyes, clearing the vision, bathing the heart. They would bow every time they saw her, be their best selves when she was around, if they knew her, knew she was the glue to their revolution, the life flow of blood through their veins, if they knew her, she would know. That's all I got today. We can go on, but we can talk about Johnny! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Baba. Oh my God! <laughs> this is this is this is us loving up on one another. Like you said, Baba, this is it's oh love that's gonna my carry God. us through. It's, <laughs> it's love that's gonna carry us through. Nothing else. Nothing but a, a a full divine, sanctified, set apart, set aside, moving kind of Sonny, steering you are of a, love. Sonny, you are a sanctified lover. <laughs> I'm gonna take it, Baba. I'm gonna take it. That's it. Was that beautiful, Musa? Man, that was wonderful, man. That was that was that was black girl magic right there. You know what I mean? You know, Mojuba. Um. Well, this is uh, you know, Sunny. It's just um an honor and and like actually really deep because I was going back and forth with Jess right now because Musa has to go next. We have to switch up. Oh shoot! Mm. Thank you for, for holding holding down for a minute because he's he's got a curfew. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to say um, this is the moment where this all really does come full circle. Musa has been, you know, I moved to Miami from New York City after falling in love with a community organizer named Philip Agnew in Palestine. And um, when I came to Miami, though it was powerful to witness and be around organizers, I saw that there was still a disconnect between the art and the cultural organizing and movement uh, campaigns and organizing and artists and poets were often brought in um, together for the rally or the campaign event, but rarely are we invited into the strategy sessions to sit down uh, 
a part, a part of how we strategically reach our people. And I believe that the spirit and the soul is a direct service. You know, there are immaterial goods that we have to offer and provide for our folks just in, in, as equal to the material goods. Um, and cultural, cultural work is not new, you know. Um, and in the legacy of the Black Panther Party, I've had conversations with, you know, um, Baba knows, Pops knows that we've, we've talked to Emory Douglas, and we've invited him in conversation, who is the Minister of Culture of the Black Panther Party. And in my feelings of isolation and seeking community, we started this smoke signal studio thing here in, in, in Miami with my partner in an effort to demonstrate the importance of providing immaterial needs as well as direct service of material needs. Um, and so Voices Poetry for the People began and was started in collaboration with Community Justice Project and the Dream Defenders. It was inspired by the revolutionary blueprint of June Jordan and the weekly open house meetings of Pops, <laughs> you know, my young adult years with him. So this is really full circle because Musa is connected to us by, the, by, by poetry. It all started in a poetry meeting, a work in our house, in our living room. And Jess was invited by Anna, who came to a Poetry for the People workshop. And she told us that Musa was on the phone and he was calling from a state penitentiary in Illinois and that if it was okay, that he listened in. And after listening in, he, start, he started, he asked if he could recite a poem and he, rec he recited a poem. And from that moment on, every week after that, he would share poems and, be a, and do the prompts, all the prompts we had, he would do them and come back ready and call specifically at that moment, thank by the grace of God, he was able to get to a phone to do that. Um, and so he's, it, it is surreal. It is uh, emotional, it's, it's, it is conjuring. It is, um, it was what is supposed to happen that he's able to now be here with us as a free man. Um, and, and because of his relationship to another poet, Vic Mensa, who's also on the call and because of the fortitude and the love and the spirit of Jess who has organized her heart to advocate and amplify his story over the past several years but particularly the last year as I've been in relationship with her so this is like a real full circle moment I, that's a long way of me saying I think it, it's, it, it's deserving of an introduction of a long introduction because Musa we love you we're so grateful you're home um, I always said to you on the phone, I'll see you on the other side. So, so to actually like you to be on the other side is crazy, it's wild, it's, uh, it's surreal. I know COVID has, has torn apart families and, and, and created a lot of trauma, but it's also brought families closer. So in everything in nature, there's balance. And we gotta think about the balance of this moment and the balance of, of nature because nature can be ruthless, she can be brutal, but she also has a love and a compassion that is unforeseen, you know, in any in any sphere. So just thank you, Musa, for being here. Thank you for your spirit, your resilience. 13 years locked up as a 14-year-old and a sentence that you should have not had, you should have never been tried as an adult, but that is this is the way of our system, this is where we are. I am grateful for you to be the next poet to come up. Please join me in welcoming Brian Harrington, AKA King Musa. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. Um, first off, I want to um, shout out all the powerful kings on him, man. The beautiful queens. I appreciate y'all, man. As much love, man. Like, like this, this, this my type of party. Like, I, lo I love this. But um, I mean, I, I began last week. Last week, I was just serving a 25 year sentence at 100, percent you know. And here I stand. And uh, I mean, thanks to everything she just said. Thanks to this beautiful woman next to me, man, who grinded her heart out, man, every day. You know what I'm saying to make sure that I'm here, man. But on the surface, it was a lot that happened. But basically, like, like, like I just said, man, I wrote my way out, like point blank period, man. The power of words is what moved that mountain, you know? So um, I can't waste too much time, man. But I thank you to my boy, Vic, you know what I'm saying? Rockhead ass, what's up, what? You know, and um, with that, I want to give y'all this, man. Love in the other night. Last night, it wasn't a young boy from around the way. Died over nothing. He had his sights on being great. Still ain't changed nothing. So he was shot down by his straight war games. Thinking back on my hood days, the teacher said, you want to make it a race your hood ways. But if I could, hey, miss, the way your life's a little deeper than the way. And DNA is something I don't think they can erase. So the question is, was I destined to be this? The struggle was bled in as I rest as a fetus, a red man. 
Believe every breath when I speak it. 14, I'm feeling like the world just ended. All because I realized that the world keeps spinning. I was facing life. My mama was crying like mine just ended. Thinking like this reality gotta be a blemish. I hear my blood yelling, but it's hard to comprehend it. I turned to the heavens to see if God could lend assistance. But stop praying because I was tired of looking at ceilings and tired of feeling those feelings that I can't even explain. Guilt in my head saying, boy, you can't even complain. But that looks on my mother's face had me feeling victim. Another loss to this cycle, what a fucking system. They turn us menace, they turn us villains, what it does to children. So how can I just get on here and play with some words? When I'm steady having dreams, I'm seeing my face on a shirt. I talk to granny, she say she keep a 3-8 in the purse. I asked her why. She say, cause baby, I just seen CNN and these days it ain't even safe in the church. Y'all up and shooting without aiming at first. Like y'all wanna see the whole race in the dirt. And I'm looking down on you baby every day, but it hurt cause I know you got the talent to easily been a drape or a dirt, you know? That piece, that piece is actually the 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 the, the first time that Aja and them got got a chance to hear me, man. And um, so I wanted to share that piece to bring y'all bring this circle um complete, you know, to make this circle complete. And um, with that said, I want to share one more piece. This piece is called "What's Justice." Here I sit, almost 13 years in on a 25 year sentence that started when I was 14 years old. Out of dire desperation, I'm left wishing. I wish justice had my heart because I just think it would beat better. And if it had my mind, I feel it would see better. I wish I knew this point of view because if it did, I know it would think better. See justice as it stands right now in the backs of blacks and browns, white and proud with Reagan residue destroying the structure of his enemies bloodline. I've seen the vow of J. Edgar Hoover that he will stop the rise of the next black messiah. Who knew his reach at one day touch Musa? Out of desperation, I'm left wishing. I'm left wishing justice had my understanding because then it would walk with reason. Or if this snake had my tongue, I feel it would have a better sense and wouldn't sense to make a threat out of boys and girls just because of their, their skin tone or their melanin. If justice had my hands, it would hold its eyes wide, then wash away the hate that darkens its smile. I wish justice had my lips and my nose, so when it faces itself in the mirror, I see its reflection and knows his actions are the direct representation of his soul. I wish. No, I can't just sit and wish on the star. I gotta stand. I gotta pick up a pen, a brush, a pencil. I gotta draw. I gotta fight. I gotta kick. I gotta scream. I gotta speak. I gotta speak. I gotta speak. And I gotta speak. Yell and then scream. Fill every notebook with my thoughts until I find the right line to convey that it is wrong. I mean, I'll starve. I won't sleep, I'll plot, I'll scheme, I'll give every ounce of my being, all of me, to reshape the face of justice so that I will never have to happen again. Thank you. Thank you, Musa. Thank you, Jess. Shout out to Jess, a real one. Y'all be safe. And I look forward to welcoming you home over here in South Florida soon. Um, okay, next. On my way, on my way. <laughs> uh, stay home, be safe, y'all. Be safe. Um, okay, so the next two are our final two before I share a final closing word. But um, thank you, you know, you guys for, for your humility, for your grace, for continuing to kind of stay with us through, through this. Um, this is church for me, so I know it's church for a lot of other people. And, you know, as church go, you be getting out way after lunch sometimes. So um, <laughs> the next two folks I'm so honored to introduce, they're known as a duo, but they are individually um, powerfully uh, spiritual conjurers. And I think that's why their union is so divine. Um, they're lyrically one of the, the illest, I think, lyrical duos I've ever seen um, of, of our generation and our time. I hope that all of you go check out their music, support them. Make sure that you playing them for your kids, you playing them for your friends because people need real, real raps from real MCs. Um, women or men, neither matters, but they are, they can kill all of them. So um, in spite of that, you know, thank you for saying yes. I see you both as poets first and foremost. 
um, because of the way that you approach not just your lyrical gifts, but your whole presence and craft. You guys came down here to smoke signals and just um, were, were a, a, a delight, a, pr a pleasure, just like really, really, really gave and grounded us with a good show in spite of all that came in the way of that. And I'm just grateful that you guys remain consistent throughout your success. So please join me in welcoming Oshun. Yes, thank y'all so much for having us with you, Aja, for putting us together. You know, it's an honor to be in the midst of such leaders and elder like Baba Bill Doon. You know what I'm saying? It's such an honor to be in your presence. Um, and all of you phenomenal, phenomenal poets. It's just a blessing to be, you know, a part of this crew. You feel me? So we're excited. Um, you know, something that we spoke about was the concept that a river that knows its source can never go dry, right? And so this is an offering that we have that is just a testament to our source and a way that we're able to tap into that we never go dry. <laughs> In the midst of the infinite, she chose me, she chose you, she chose us. Our mother earth called us to be her children, granting us the birthright to witness her for lifetimes. Each of us called here to enter through a sacred womb, nine months immersed in our mother's infinite ancestral waters, traveling through canals of mitochondrial memory, strength and survival, entering headfirst to see the world so that we can live to witness her vastness. She called our ancestors to be her first, created perfectly to embody every piece of her being, inheriting the earth to raise her frequency higher. Each of us descended from someone chosen and empowered to contribute all of their celestial primordial strength to this planet, born to lines of families chosen for this sacred purpose. And together, they made a pact. She gave her water, roots, herbs, and fruits for us to be nourished. And in return, she asked that we protect and nurture her. She chose me. She chose you. She chose us. But we forgot. We forgot that we are her children. We assumed that she was merely a location here to serve our collective ego. We forgot that she was here before us and will be here long after. We assume that she cannot be broken or even more so that neglecting her could even never break us. We forgot that the air that we breathe is sacred and that the sun that gives us light is a privilege. We decided that her worship is the devil's work. Never questioning who was it that told us this lie. We forgot that each storm that falls from the sky is a blessing and a message from our creator. Depending on a scientific method developed by our oppressors, an entity less directly descended from the roots that our mother planted, rejecting the very science that our mother shows us so clearly. We forgot to worship the deep healing secrets that reside in her forests, the leaves that are encoded with every remedy to every illness, even those uncovered, the concoctions that rejuvenate our bodies and ward off evil spirits that are feeding on our fear and confusion. Instead, we separated body from spirit only to rely on money's medicine, injecting our own children with man-made tinctures, mockeries of mother's magic, depending on their system and not realizing that they are killing us. She's watching us and she always has, waiting for us to make the decision to learn from our past. Imagine walking on the path of a bioengineered weapon created to be administered to the world, causing a disaster at every corner of this planet. And suddenly, there was no longer access to the grocery store or the hospital or even electricity. Will we know how to survive? Will religion be enough to save us? Will the lessons from higher education be enough to save us? Is our faith enough? 
She chose me. She chose you. She chose us to bear witness to her greatness, to eat her fruits and grow stronger and embody her grace, her glory, her patience. Giving thanks for every step we take is on ancient holy ground. She chose us to lead by example. Walk in your truth and if they follow, that's their choice. Plant yourself in your sweetness. Know that we're blessed from birth because we're born from the soil that carries our ancestors and our descendants. We bear fruits of joy and justice. We are the light in darkness. We are the calm in chaos. We are gravity in space. This primordial place is our mother. So let's respect her as such. Watch your tone. What was that? Check yourself. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Her waters, her land, no man can exist without them. She chose me, she chose you, she chose us, but we forgot. So we are here to remind you, this pressure is no match for your peace. Permit yourself to rinse their projections. You are not blank space for this world to fill. You are real, you can feel. Forgive yourself and forward. Learned you only live once, didn't know that meant forever. Trapped in a circle of snakes in a cycle of lifetimes, drinking their venom to protect you from their bite. They tricked you into thinking you couldn't protect yourself. Tricked you into thinking you were a motherless child, void of roots, born with less than what you needed to thrive. We are here to remind you, you are whole. Embed yourself into Mother Earth. She is medicine. Let her heal us. Drink her waters, eat her fruits grow stronger and embody her grace, her glory, her patience. Give thanks for every step you take is on holy, ancient ground. Teach your children never to cross her. Carry her with two hands and she will shower you in abundance. Let those who mock her start at her hand. Remember her worship, the air that fills our breath, the sun that charges our spirit, the water that nourishes our beings, the earth whose fruit we bear is magic. You are magic. She chose me. She chose you. She chose us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is that it? That's it? That's all y'all want to do one more? Uh, that's all we have. Yeah, <laughs> That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Oshun. Give it up. Please go follow them, support their music. Um, and we're just grateful that you all decided to give us that offering during this time. Thank you for being here. Again, thank you for having us. We send our love virtually and uh, you know, through the ethers to yes. everyone joining us today. Flowing through. Yes. And uh, yes, love y'all. Thank you. All right. So our next... Um, person going up. So Vic, I've known Vic since he was um, 14 or 15 years old. And um, in my time of mentoring, I still remember when he brought me one of them little forms to fill out for his high school at Whitney Young. And I've seen him grow. He's seen me grow a great deal. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about mentorship and educators and teachers is that we, we are the ones that teach, you know, um, more than anything, I think, what it means to be an educator or a teacher is that you're there to learn and to listen. And I feel like Vic continues to teach me about how to be a better person, how to listen um, creatively. And I'm inspired by the way that he continues to show up when I call. Um, I told him about Musa actually really just thinking that maybe he could lead me to someone else who would have the ability to help release Musa and, and um, the fact that he, he's maintained a relationship and continues to main, maintain relationships with people that I've connected him to in, in an effort to, to amplify and organize other people's voices who are often left or forgotten or unheard and use his platform to continue to uplift people. I'm just grateful. You, um, you've, you've really come a long way, Vic. There's still so much for people to see and witness of, of your growth. You're so young. There's still so much in store. Um, so thank you for keeping your head in the books and your eyes on the people and I look forward to what you're sharing. You're an incredible writer and I'm glad people get to actually hear that part of you today. So join me in welcoming Vic Mensa. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Um, hey, he came with all the lights over there. The purple, the, 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 the bleeding uh, lights over there. Oh, this is Club Vic. You talk about Club Vino. Yeah, this this downtown Southside Chicago. This is downtown Southside right here. <laughs> Can't go to the club. I brought the club to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I uh, did this. Um, this is like a little journal entry that I wrote the other day. Um, I like I liked when Saul did that. You know, I, I shouldn't even be saying Saul's name before I get to try to say some poetry and shit. But you know, I did like when he did that the other day. That was dope. Um, so this was a little journal entry that I wrote. Uh, man, I think maybe the day after, maybe the day after Musa got out. Um, I was thinking that, I was thinking we must have the courage to dream impossible. If, if we cannot see what lies beyond our gaze, how can we change what we're looking for? The last time I talked to Musa, he spoke with the urgency of a man without 12 years left on a 25 year sentence. I've been reading The Power of Now, he told me. It's helped me live in the present because I've just been so obsessed with coming home. He told me he hasn't been able to draw for a year because his thoughts have been too scattered to focus. Free world daydreams dance around his skull like the pulses of an alarm clock saying, time's up. I could resonate. I often feel chaotic thoughts clogging my pipeline, thoughts to the past, thoughts to the future. Musa was only 14 when he went in. Now he damn near 27. Charged as a man, he was just an adolescent and elicited confession on some Central Park Five shit. The judge hit him with a 25-year sentence. He turned the light on. Rust water comes from the sink. Scribbling until his pen runs out of ink. He writes around to teleport his mind outside dates and corrections. Where niggas is reckless and the violence is infectious. Since the virus hit, they on 23-hour lockdown. No TV, no car games, to no yard now. A commissary conversations with his mama off the tablet. A story of betrayal like an inner city hamlet. He was handed a pistol and told to stick it through the window. The driver hit the gas, the gun went off, and the hit bro was kinfolk, sold him out by his own family. Then the state's attorney locked him up and threw away the key. I picture myself at 14. Brave faced, brace faced, huh, with a nappy afro, the pick with the black fist, sticky fingers ignorant to the world in so many ways. To imagine being sentenced as an adult for anything is a nightmare I have trouble even visualizing. Young boys stolen like their innocence, criminalized, branded, brutalized. These are the everlasting shackles of white supremacy, the unsung hero of apartheid, the magnum opus of Jim Crow, his greatest invention, the silent middle passage. For a year now, I've been getting to know Musa through his lyrics, his artwork, his story, but most of all, his dreams. The tide is turning, I told him just two days ago. Only so much longer will they be able to bastardize black boys in the shadows. He asked me to find a group by the name of Uptown People's Law Center that was appealing to the governor's office about releases related to COVID-19. I did. The sympathetic voice on the, on the phone nodded in agreement as I pled Musa's case. Sentenced as an adult at 14 in a gun sale gone bad, used by his adult cousin, earned degrees, funded programs behind bars, exhausted every rehabilitative opportunity in a place far more concerned with free labor. I'll send this to the governor's lawyer today, he said, but I can't make any promises. I thanked him and I moved along. I mean, it'll be insane to dream anything that really come of this, right? Such a stretch of reality. He has 12 years left. 12 years. No harm in trying though. Uh, the next day, Jess on the phone, cut through the clatter of quarantine cups and Hennessy clinking marble kind of, Nick! Moose's currency got Grammy! He's coming home! He's coming home! He's coming home. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was crazy to me, you know, because I, you, it, it really made me think that, um, that we have to be courageous enough to allow ourselves to dream and to see impossible as potential. You know what I'm saying? Because oftentimes, I, I think that we act, you know, 
um, because we we because we must. But it's difficult sometimes to believe things like, you know, a twenty-five year, twelve year sentence disappearing, or things like us not being murdered by police in the streets constantly. But we got to be able to believe that that shit is real to make it come to life. Um, so yeah, I was I was thinking about gratitude the other day, and I was journaling, and I and I like wrote some of these words. Um, I am alive. A far cry past my expiration date, ain't they heard? Niggas is forever. I am alive. I cross oceans to be here. The sight of big water still makes me weep sometimes, but I am alive. A constant threat to the imperialist, capitalist, white supremacist, patriarchal agenda. I am alive. So much more than these lips, this brow, these hands. Goddamn it. I am beautiful because I am alive. Named for a great great grandfather, Ashanti warrior who killed British. Freedom fighting is in my blood. I am alive. When a nigga die young, do they stay 17 for eternity? I am alive. No paternity test needed. I'm a child of God. At least that's what the preachers say, but the preacher touched children. So, hey, I'm alive. You know, when you live in the city your whole life, brick walls start to talk to you. They tell stories of street lights. I am alive, shit, like Miles Davis Horn. There's got to be some dope in these notes. I've been close enough to death to know that I am alive. Fashion of beating heart and deep scars on skin. I am alive, like my grandma used to talk to me with her eyes. Love has no language. She ain't speak English. I am alive. I am street corner vigils on 51st by the shark's chicken. Wish he knew the sharks don't play chicken. I am alive. 100,000 swishes later and still ain't shit sweet. I am, however, alive like the first breath of my partner outside recycled prison air and recycled prison gear made by recycled prisoners here. I am alive. Um, yeah, that, that's something I was thinking. And I wanted to do a couple little pieces um, that, that Aja wrote. Uh, Aja gave me these prompts um, in like some some writing sessions that that we were doing last year, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm thinking about dreaming. I'm thinking about dreaming, and I'm dreaming about thinking uh, that that the dream could just be a thought, you know, and and not, not impossible. Um, the CIA agent that was sent to infiltrate Kwame Nkrumah falls in love with his daughter and is captured before being strung up in the streets of Accra. The coup is unsuccessful. Eric Holder is never ensnared in the prison industrial complex and thus given no incentive to snitch. He is present at Nipsey Hussle's wedding to Lloyd London and even catches the bouquet. Bill Clinton never learned to play the saxophone and is promptly impeached, not for Monica Lewinsky, but for the 94 crime bill. Fred Hampton's bodyguard, William O'Neill, happens to be sleeping in his bed the night Chicago police break in and is riddled with the bullets intended for the chairman. Kurt Cobain's shotgun is empty. After the establishment of a single African currency, the sham governments of neo-colonialism dissolve and all votes remove from the content. The corroded pipes in Flint, Michigan, reveal an undiscovered mineral that gives the power of telekinesis to the residents of Detroit we discovered that this is what made Motown so great. Laquan McDonald is actually heir to the McDonald's fortune and his unsuccessful assassination attempt by Jason Van Dyke kickstarts the abolition of police in America. The Black Panther Party evolves into a third political party in American politics, establishing a socialist arm of government that provides free breakfast for all children. Muddy Waters and B.B. King discovered a young white musician by the name of Elvis Presley. He plays backup guitar on their hugely successful world tour. The story ends there. The shooters in Columbine mistakenly enter a police academy. Spanish invaders on Mayan land had their heads cut off and used for a soccer game between pyramids. British boats landed at Plymouth Rock and are greeted by gigantic kraken-like sea monsters that eat every plank on the Mayflower. <laughs> um, and the, 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 la the last little joint that I'm gonna do, um, is uh, another one of the prompts that Aja gave me. Um, is it the um, house party one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Tupac is dancing the digital underground with Janet Jackson in a blue lit corner. The scene felt like Cabrini Green and Cooley High. 
Bob Marley lights a joint, guitar in hand, singing redemption songs and smoke whispers between words. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale rap black liberation underneath the stairs. Thelonious monks' fingers crossed the keys. Discordant purple notes rise through the air as a side of wine slowly in solitude. Her shadow casts across the room like the silhouette of a panther in the night. Zach De La Roca is freestyling with Gil Scott in the driveway. Machines rage above as the ghetto bird shines a light from overhead. Kwame Nkrumah is DJ in Nigerian disco. Fela pushing the faders as sunset fades to black. Kurt Cobain's guitar weeps from the kitchen where Amy Winehouse drinks Merlot slowly from an empty flower vase. Malcolm's cigarette fills the air as he sits with legs crossed talking to Gaddafi about his trip to Africa. Big Meech brought a pound, breaking down bright green buds on the back of a back magazine cover with Bernie Mac on the front. Sammy Davis Jr.'s steps play the beat for Coltrane's horn, the soaring melodies of bird climb out above the clouds. Jeff Fort is playing a dice game in the corner, hair wrapped in black sunglasses. Che Guevara's motorcycle roars out front. Toussaint Louverture dances a magical ritual of freedom and love. The moon washes us with the cool glow of ocean light. Our face is frozen in joy. Chuck D is on the microphone alerting the party that the helicopter has now come for us and there is a line of police waiting outside. But when I step outside, they have all disappeared and there are roses on the floor where they once stood, a hawk circling above where the helicopter hovered. Word up. Um, yeah, man, you know, that, that, that's what I wanted to say. Um, I'm introducing you now. Uh, I'm you. You're coming up next, right? All right. Yeah. So I want to. Uh, yeah, man. I, I want to take. Uh, want to take this moment to uh, to extend the utmost appreciation to someone that is, uh, you know, so so pivotally essential to my life and to my my growth as as a person as a as a writer um as an artist um i met aja when i was i think i was i think i was about 16 15 16 she put me on like one of my first concerts ever and um it was you know in in classic form she was doing some fresh shit it was like they called it every drop counts and it was um it was to raise money for haiti at the time so this has got to be like 2010 or something, you know what I mean, or nine, and something like that. It was raising money for Haiti when when the water was all, you know what I mean. And I remember, man, I had this laminate that was like all the people, all the artists from the show got. And I went to school the next day with my laminate still on. I was feeling so fresh. I, I felt like I had a chain on. I was like, I was like, yeah, y'all don't even know. I was out late last night. You know, it's cool. I was at a con. I, yeah, I was performing at a concert. You know, it worked. You know? Um, and just like, man, you know, um, Oz is just, you know, she, she's always been someone that has, uh, pushed me to learn to think and to grow and gave me Malcolm X autobiography and a lot of other shit. So I think that's the wrap it up sign. All right, cool. <laughs> it's on <all> you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vic. I love you. So wrap it up, B. Wrap it up. <laughs> Um, well, in true, in true Blacks, you know, CP color time fashion, um, I thank you all for like bearing with this time and just like being present. This is church. And I'm, I'm so grateful for all the words that all of you have shared. Um, Vic, thank you for agreeing. Oshun, just everybody. Like, I think one of the things I want to come out of this show is that people that don't see themselves as poets start to consider that they are and move in the world that they are. Um, and hopefully you all leave from, from here inspired and continue to do the work in your community. I'm gonna read two, three poems. One is a little shorter, it's an I am poem, but the, the first one, um, I never know what I'm gonna read until the moment I'm in it. And this one just, I thought to read it, not because she's here, but because it just felt, felt like my spirit was just like, okay, let's go with this one. Um, Sonia Sanchez, a few, few years ago, I was able to organize the Maroon Poetry Festival and bring a bunch of elders together. Uh, we would not be anywhere we are without our elders and they are libraries for real. So um, I got the honor to read this poem after Nipsey, it was actually the day after Nipsey Hussle died. And I was in a real bad funk. I didn't know how to do this event for Sonia Sanchez, but I wrote this poem the night before the event and I wanted to share it here with you all. 
as if we did not lose another, as if life were never so convenient and guns so easy to reach, our country so trigger happy these days or sad depending on who's dying today, depending on the touch. The moon raises my rivers yesterday. I leaked all around the house, a bad cough and a cloud looking over my shoulder as I wrote. And though I cry, I am celebrating a woman I love who loved me before I knew myself to be what blooms in the blood, what scratches the voice, trembles words. Every day is a new morning, another fight we live to dance between tears beating on our faces. I am tired of strength. When I first showed up to the community organizing meeting, I uttered the word poetry and their faces sunk with confusion. Who's got time for poems? When the world's on fire and your brother's body on your front door and your sister's been missing for weeks and your dad got laid off and your mother gone mad with mothering and your uncle locked up and your aunt need a fix. I mean, life can get you down and out. But when the organizers were weary and all the marching wore them down and all the meetings ended in arguments and all the foundations brought out the snakes and all the trauma piled up on their desks and all the campaign ended with politicians, I offered poems in their palms like petunias, revolutionary blushing shades of plum. I fed them Sonia and Jane and June and Pat Parker and Carolyn Rogers, how every poem, how every poem still piece is true. Like yesterday's battlefield is tomorrow's front yard. Still, still all my heroes are fighting depression. Some live to see what they fought to prevent and we ought to keep our hopes high, but all this comfort and security got our institutions kidnapped in broad daylight, treaty torn and tricked, bamboozled by the beaming brilliance of greed, got our babies programmed for numbness. Content is, and what is an enemy if we do not know who our friends are? And who is a comrade these days when the poems are good, depending on who reposts them, depending on who fetching for awards, and who will feed our activists, our organizers freedom, if not the poets? We are losing our frontline warriors to suicide and is not choosing to fight a sort of sacrifice, a kind of offering all our children have become altars to the liberation front. The other day, the other day we lost Amber Evans' baby girl found in the Scioto River, she was 28. And before that it was Erica Garner, a heart full of storm and lightning, she was 27. And before that it was Marsha McCarroll on the steps of the Ohio State House, hunted by the hunting. He was 23. Basim Masiri, our Palestinian brother from another mother. What about Ferguson and Edward Crawford and Darren Seals and how dreams smell of tear gas and milk? We cry trumpets and turntables in the corners of our hopes. We rhythm and blues. And though I cry, though I cry, I'm celebrating a woman I love. She who turned the pen in her hand to a grenade. Haiku homegirls, folklore florists flung stories into our minds, planted orchids and daffodils, sunflowers. She who shivered the sky, rain showers and sunsets born of her blessing, the flesh of her words, kindred sister who wrote for daughters of movement who say, do, act, the call, response, resist, ride of our rebellious laughter. As we readied our reasons for writing, we armed ourselves with her poems. A strategy for organizing the heart, prophetic prayers, a smile made of spirituals and birth pains. These days, it hurts to write. Every sentence is a false promise. Is we or is we not trying to get free? And when the poems do what they do, they get it done. Sister Sanchez, eternal, eternal fellow fire spitter, bad, I mean bad to the bone. I never met a poem who loved us like you do, all of us. And when my anger knocks the wind out of my weeping, I sit on the hills of your humming words and feast of all the ways we got to get to where we are going in the quiet mirror of a poem, how to be human, how to shake loose arms outstretched, outstretched summoning us uncool and truth telling care, how to heal in the ancestral cathedral of hands. This is a poem for you, for us, for all the poems that sistered us in this ancestral war, all the lines, somersaulting. Sister, you are our North Star and our darkest nights. I'm gonna leave. Okay, so this poem is called uh, Cast Away and it was written for um, an exhibition that was to imagine what the other side of now is in light of the, the diaspora and the Caribbean. So here we go. I did not want to write a poem full of corpses. So I wrote a sacred pink blue sky jeweled on the horizon. Laughter as the loudest star sleeps, humor hugs every ache hole how heavy heads lay after a long day in the humid heat. Caribbean moon sighs and joyous dreams. 
I did not wish to speak of what should not be spoken, so silence breathed into all the words a haunting I come from, a language that does not write itself. Our ancestors speak hurricane, a thunder tongue, shivering tides, and a petty revenge. The mid-Atlantic is a vexed auntie, rattling, rattling rivers and roofs, ready for reckoning, knocking at the chest of men. On the other side of now, on the other side of now, there is a door where we return. Every island is a hip swaying between here and there, afloat in the dance to belong, rocking in the arms of the edge where the sea is an emerald flag and palm trees praise the air. Every shore is an altar of remembrance, embraced on purpose, picne of the sun ray where prayer trembles the light or how a storm retreats, we marvel and move eternal, unformed and unlost, hips hollering, elbows flapping like fanning flames, bare feet chant in the sand or in a concrete jungle, love taps quake the nape of the earth's neck where daughters of diaspora dream and inherit journeys of flesh where a smile is also a scar or how my grandfather came to see about us years after he died, wearing my uncle's face dimpled and shining eyes like two wet black beans baptized by a spirit rum, slapped on his breath, charming man and all he was, checking on his grandbabies. Fear not death, cause we visit kinfolk there, lingering in the blood where the ocean hums, tribe of the great abyss, and not knowing from where or what we come and still to arrive before they could conquer us. We came by shipwreck, by wind and wave, pushed into the water, splashing and shaking. The wound teaches us to remember where tomorrow glows. Listen for the animal clawing within. A rooster calls directions between this world and the next. There are roads that cannot be mapped and there are streets that do not have names. We ran, we ran, we ran away into the ochre tinted mountains seeking maroon hills. I was born borderless, mounting a dollar van like an orisha scribbling visions on a train or in an airport, traveling ritual, voice, and time. I was born of distance in between now and then. Okay. <laughs> it's some odd magic on that, baby. That was a monster. Thank you. You are, you, you are first rate wordsmith. Let's let's not make any hesitations or doubt about it. You're a great organizer, but you are definitely a super master of words, honey. You can hook you hook it up nice. That that was a pleasure to hear because you are true to poetry. There are quite a number of us who have the desire, but we don't have the skill. Having a desire is wonderful, but when you've got skills, it's like all of your arrows are sharp and they penetrate, and that's what we want. And I surely appreciate, and I think everyone who heard you can appreciate not only what you're saying, but how you're saying it too. Uh, like Africanus always says, we ain't no words, but we masters of sound. Well, you got the sound, baby. You got the sound. Thanks, Pops. I wanted to, to end with one more because I know y'all are bearing with us. But the reason why I want to end with this one is that uh, it was an I am challenge. So I want to put to you all and all the listeners as a prompt to write your own I am. There's two prompts I want to give. One is an I am for you to write your own prompt. It started by Prentice Powell and another poet, um, a brother. And then there's another one where if you could write a homemade remedy for uh, an ailment of society right now, what would be the ingredients and how would you instruct people to use those ingredients? So that's a prompt for everyone um, to take with them. And then the I am, write who you are. I wanted to share this one because one of the things that we've been talking about, of course, is healing, um, home remedies, Etc. But, but I got the privilege of doing an iboga ceremony a few, a few months ago in October in Egypt. And what I learned from that is that every Black person, for sure, all people need to have a relationship to sacred medicine. But for sure, Black people need to have a relationship to sacred medicine. And sacred me medicine is not something that is taught. It's made to be illegal. And I think it's made to be illegal for a reason. But it does have powerful healing uh, uh, manifestations in our psyche and our relationship to our ancestors. 
And a big part of um, our disconnect as folks who are in America and in Western societies is a disconnect from the land, a disconnect from all that Mother Nature provides. And there is ev every answer we need is in the ground. It's in the earth, it comes from the ground. And this um, piece was inspired by me thinking about basically after my Iboga trip, I mean, it's not just about that, it's about who I am, so I, it's for everybody, but I wanted to leave everyone with, please take your time to love on yourself, to figure out who you are in this moment, what your role is and what you have to contribute. We all have something to offer, whether we be a poet, we be a chef, we be a cook, we be an accountant, we be a dancer, we be a scientist, everyone has something to contribute and to participate in this moment. Do what you can, where you will, and love on one another. And this is where I'll end. It's just, I am, it's not as long. I am a flower pot sitting on the subway platform dreaming of a Southern sky. I am the Southern sky. Bruised hues of blues, an inner city with an ocean front view, a Holy Ghost tongue possessed between the pews, sleepless in the twilight, a vision board invisible to eyesight, loose hips humming under summer porch lights on the djembe drum. Rhythm spun between love drunk knees. I'm a runaway river, a sawed off shotgun creeping through the leaves, a kiss that quivers, a machete that bleeds. I'm the bananas on Josephine's skirt, a brown lick of flirt, the gardenia in Billie Holiday's hair. I'm a blues song and a cigarette's glare, a beaded Zulu hat on Makiba's head, Bob Marley's lock, a natty dread. I am Marcus Garvey's last microphone, ancient lady of grace, Nefertiti's royal throne. I'm a poem. Handwritten by La Lupe on my, the Malecon, I'm a grassroots meeting of orishas in the basement of a brownstone, a homegirl homegrown in magic, a mermaid of memory swimming through tragic times. I am the one that got away. I'm the love I never had, a cipher of butterfly wings. I'm a little girl who had big dreams and prayers and my mother's purse. I'm the color of Saturday. Bouncing off the walls, I drizzle in the wind like a sun shower shawl. I am the final hour before the moon rests. I'm what a day looks like, honest and undressed. I'm la cascaria on the door, windows and vents. A protector of realms. I'm a buiti shaman who ascends. I'm the mirror, the root, and the end. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being patient and waiting for this whole thing to be shared. Thank you to all the poets. Please unmute your mics. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you our men. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody. Thank you, Thank you Baba. Thank you, guys. All of you, please, 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 everyone, look up everybody's work. Continue to um, support one another during this time. Dr. Arherman Henderson, thank you for spending time with us. Rich Medina, Black Ice with the baby. What up? Ooh, y'all cold. Thank y'all, man. Real talk. There's some goats in here. Yeah, some real goats in here. Yes, thank you, Ursula Rucker. Thank you, Abi Odun, Baba Odun. Please, thank you, thank you Kusa. Thank for starting you. rap. Yes. <laughs> for starting hip hop. Thank yeah, you, Maya. Thank you for starting hip hop. Yeah, good looks on this hip hop. Baba. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Shabnaka, you were snapping hard. Oh, Black man, y'all was like, yes, I'm so happy to be in, this, in your company. But, you know, Abiel Doom, Baba, thank you for making hip hop. You know, making it. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. You did us a real solid with that. Yes, 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 yes. That was a cool little favor. <laughs> you looked out for us with that. <laughs> I want to thank I want to thank you all for being branches of the tree because nothing nothing lives without an extension, and whatever I set up, you all have extended it into something phenomenally beautiful, and I'm very very proud. I'm very proud to be a part of this particular moment. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And I know that everything is going to be all right. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Thanks. Any final words from folks? Hey, stay alert, man. Stay focused. Stay alert. Let's let's maintain. Let's let's elevate. It's cool that we uh we got our little college all American badge, but now we in the league. Mm -hmm. And the league is different. And I feel like Them elbows yeah. in the face ain't no foul up here. So. Get your ass in the gym. 
get over yourself, get over your ego, get over whoever is inflating all the weaknesses in your game. All of us. It's very important so that these this vocabulary can stay as clean as it's been. This is a new normal, you know? This is how it's going to be going down, and we got to be accountable. We all know famous people, but this is not about fame. No. About frequencies and vibrations and putting the right type of projected energy in the universe to leave people better than they were when we found them. So let's maintain and move that forward, you know? That's all for everything we've done. Beautiful. We got another game tomorrow, and it's the toughest team in the conference. That's really good. It's Just sleep, honey. Letting y'all know that when I ask y'all to come to South Florida after all this shit is done. Woo! We're going to have a party in Miami. <laughs> we're, ha we're having a welcome home party for Musa as oh soon God. as. Hey. Hey. Oh, a hell of a party. As long as Rich, as long as Rich would be the DJ. I'll be there. And the Tennessee I'm, there. I'm only there if Midas bringing beans and rice because she was talking about it. And I'm not talent behind your head out there, homegirl. Yo, my guy, come to California. We'll give you all all the spirulina you can handle. I just we need to find a sponsor, and I will charge you the opportunity to take this brother to get some credible kicks in his life. Ooh. Let's do it. Let's do yeah, it. Like, paper to, to document it. We need that in our lives. Anybody who's watching and wants to help sponsor whatever we're about to do and moving forward, please, please, please support. Um, also, you watching, want to help sponsor. Look after your elders, y'all. Look after your elders. Look after your elders. Look after your elders. Make sure they are well taken care of. Make sure you're looking out for them. Make sure you're looking after them. Check in with them, call them, make sure they're healthy and peaceful and have everything that they need. Everything Maida just said for our elders, do the same thing for your local independent bookstore. <laughs> Big, facts. Yeah. Big facts. Big facts. Big facts. Yeah. City Lights is about to like go out because they were well, City Lights, to they actually, their, their Kickstarter is doing well and they have a show on Friday. Um, they're helping fundraise for other Bay Area independent booksellers now because they've maxed out Marcus Books, which is the country's oldest Black-owned bookstore. Um, their goal was to raise 50000 They did it in four days, so now they're upping the goal. You can donate to them. I'll put the link on the Facebook. Um, but, yeah, um, there's, a, there's a great list. Um, the person who put together the Marcus Books actually has a good compendium all the, of all the independent Black bookstores. So find yours. All right. Thank you, guys. Um... The next, the next homemade will be May first. We're gonna have Martina Spada and Mark Noah. Yeah, Stacey Ann Chin, some incredible other poets that are yeah. coming through. So keep, please look out every first and fifteenth. We're offering you homemade remedies. I love y'all. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.